Lift your hands to Jesus. Begin to bless him from the bottom of your heart. Just bless his name. Father, we give you glory. Even in the name of Jesus, we declare so we call it done. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Can you give a clap offering to the Lord Jesus? And I pray that today God will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Praise the Lord Hallelujah. that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you will know what is the hope of your calling. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you excited to be here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah somebody is fired up. Amen. Amen. I have a couple of things to share with you today on if they can take the harm for me. Okay. Just speak in the language of the Spirit, okay? Speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Don't be silent at all. Oh yeah, shendo robo shanda da ba ba da ba da ba. Oh yeah, Franzo se ke pele fi koske da ba ba sandos. Se bara ba kun se sabara tele sambro sandele ke pesha. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Even in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay, so I'm speaking on the supernatural realm and expose on the realm of the spirit. Um, last two years, we did legalities and we spoke about dealing rightly in the spirit. Who remembers that's what we thought? Legalities one. Who remembers that? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. But today I'm going to share with you on this very, and sometimes it's, it's not even about repetition. It's also necessary for you to grasp and capture why understanding the realm of the spirit is important. What that means is that your life how you live, everything that's happening around you is a product of the spirit. And so I want you to really, really be very sensitive today. Very, very sensitive. When I'm teaching these subjects, I'm, I try my best not to be too deep. Okay? Because it's a deep thing. But also, if you are able to address or capture the depth of it, it changes everything in your life. Honestly, it changes a lot of things in your life. It changes a whole lot in your life. Now, the word supernatural means, number one, paranormal. It's paranormal. One English word also is phantasmal. Phantasmal. Paranormal, phantasmal. It also means preternatural. Preternatural. I'll, I'll explain all those words and how it looks like. Paranormal, 
phantasmal, preternatural. Are those the three words I've used? Okay. Why the supernatural realm? It also means metaphysical or unearthly. All these things simply means that you cannot, when, when, I say, when you use the word paranormal, it means that there is no science to explain it. That's paranormal. There's no science to explain it. There's also in the physical, in the metaphysical definition that there is no, it, it's not, it, it's not, it's not real in the senses realm. When you use your senses to evaluate it, it's not real. It's, it's very unreal. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know you. I don't know where you're born. I don't know anything about you. All of a sudden, I look at your face. I know things about you. It's, it's, it's not normal. So you are in church, so it's easy for you to. But when you tell people, they're like, how is this working? It's metaphysical. It is beyond the senses. There's no way you can capture this information. At the same time, too, you can't just look at somebody and raise your hand and say this, and the person is slain. It's weird. Like, you just ask somebody, they're looking at you. I was one of my mentors just this Sunday service afternoon, and he was saying something that he has this meeting he has in his church, healing service. And the, 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 the doctor's association of his, of his town or his state were not happy, he's in Nigeria, were not happy about it. They said he's using strange things. So they came and said they will now investigate the patients first to, sh to, be, to verify they are sick. And before he also ministers, they inf inspect his hand to see if there's something in his hand. Then he now walks up to <coughs> the, the first, what do you call it, person he's ministering to, blind person. As soon as he touches the person, the eyes open. Second, third, fourth, everybody's getting their miracles just like that. And the, the, the senior consultant came and said, can I have your number? <laughs> he said, I don't just testify it is true. This is real. You see, so when we even put some of the testimonies, our people think we went to type it. Because the healing we are seeing, it is, it, it's not true. That's the whole point of the word, the word supernatural. It, is, it cannot be explained by the senses. It is paranormal. It is, how do I call it, phantasmal. It is, it is abstract. It's abstract. There was one meeting many years ago God literally reduced the lady's weight in the service. Yeah, so when the, when the power of God hit, the lady said, and now she said, we saw it. Her dress was loose on her. She just shrank in the meeting. It is strange. But it happens. Amen. Amen. And I'm trying to say that if you do not understand the supernatural, what is going to happen to you is that you are going to be stuck in a realm which I call the loop of effort. The way life is designed, effort will keep you in a loop. You go round, round, try, try, but there are some dimensions you can never access because you don't believe in the supernatural. And I'm going to say this. Anyone who has the right knowledge, working knowledge of the supernatural has an advantage over you. Let me repeat it. Anybody that has the right knowledge Working knowledge of the supernatural has already an advantage over you. They do. They do. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said amen. amen. So if you listen to the message on legalities, I said something far powerful that life is supernatural. Let me give you an example. Very powerful example. It's not your clock that makes you wake up. How your subconscious responds to your nature is even a supernatural occurrence. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Yes. I'll give you an example. 
every sleep doctor or anyone who does sleep analysis will tell you that there's a state of your being when you sleep uh, that uh, elicits rest. At the same time, it's as if there's a part of your brain that's working that only works when you sleep. And when you come awake, that part goes off. The, the subconscious you talk about is a very weird thing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, am I preaching? Yeah. Don't get lost. I'm trying to. Are you here? Yeah. No, it's very weird. Somebody will have a heart transplant and start feeling the feelings of the person whose heart was given to him. Meanwhile, to the heart is a physiological organ. Yeah. It's muscle. How do they give you somebody's sack of blood? Then you start thinking their memory. How? And it's not once, it's not twice. In fact, it's so serious that, can I even shock you? You can carry somebody's blood and you will smell like the person. Yeah. Even blood transfusion can change your body odor. I'm telling you, it's a serious thing. It's so serious that you can carry the heart of somebody and you meet somebody you don't know, but you start loving the person. Yeah. Meanwhile, too, it is a muscle. I'm not talking of your brain, no. It's a muscle. How can a muscle... Let me show you. There are three places that actually keep memory. Your subconscious, that's your mind, your heart, and your stomach. Yeah. The doctors will tell you, your GIT, your, 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 your digestive tract has memory. Oh, my God. That's why you can't shock your body with food you are not aware of. It, your body doesn't remember that type of food. And in fact, in certain forensic sciences, we can just open your stomach and track a lot of things about your life. Oh, yes. Your stomach can tell us where you've been. <laughs> what you have been eating. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing? How can a muscle keep memory? How? How does this thing that is pumping, poof, 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 it's, called, it's a paranormal dimension of science. They can't explain why this thing has no neurons. It does not have a memory chip. Yet, when you, you, in some cases, some cases, if it was the brain, you understand. That oh, when you transplant brain, the person will start speaking a language that they are not aware of. But do you know, even in that, I'll give you an example. There is a symptom of malaria called high fever. Who has had high fever before? Who can describe high fever for me? Where are my doctors? Can you lift your hands? Can you explain what high fever is? How is high fever? Like? What, is, what happens to your brain? The doctors don't do like you don't know what I'm talking about. When we come to your hospital, you write all sorts of things for us. Please own up today. What is high fever? What are some of the symptoms of high fever? Okay, the, let the patient speak. Okay, the former patients. <laughs> Those who were former patients of high fever, what happened? At the same time, that's high fever. You were seeing boxes. Hey. Like box, box, like rectangle or square. You were describing boxes. Okay. Who, who has experienced high fever before? What was the symptom? Yeah. Okay, you don't remember. Who, who else? Oh, I saw a lot of people have. Yes. Tilly, what is it? You act funny. Talking anyhow. Okay. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes. Who, who else? Who else can help us? One more. Yeah. Yeah. So the doctors, what, what's the reason for that? Doc, what, what, what's the reason for that fever? Hallucination. What causes the hallucination? So it begins to affect the brain because of the temperature. That means when you enter a place, the place is too hot. <laughs> you can think wrongly. May the Lord bless you with AC. Yes. Some of your nightmares is the room is hot. Yes. It's just hot room. That's why it, it, your ankle is pressing your neck. It's not your ankle. It's hot. The room is hot. You need cool room. You'll dream well. Amen. All right. Now, I said that to say something. There's something, and some of you, sometimes you go to experience, you don't record it, I mean mentally. But some of the people who hallucinate, one of the things 
one person said to me was, in their high fever state, they hallucinated to the point where every day they slept, they went to a particular house. Yes, like if, if they sleep, there's a house they go to, it's like they're part of that family. Yeah, one person told me, said, they were part of a Jamaican family. Like they were, yes. No, no, I'm coming. I'm saying something to bring something. So, I'm, I'm giving an example. For instance, someone goes through a coma. Then after six months of coma, they come out and they speak fluent French. And they've never learned French before. Nobody taught them French. Their brain went to look for French. Not even the basic one they learned in GSS. Expect. When nobody was playing any French tape in the hospital, and they just come out of it and they are speaking another tank they have never known before. Explain that to me. Paranormal. Do you understand? It's paranormal. The person is an expert in something. Some, some sleep six months of coma, come out, and they are mathematical genius. They can solve any problem. All of a sudden. Now, the science will say they unlock a certain part of their brain. It becomes feasible for us to understand if when it was unlocked, they went to learn. <laughs> but if you unlock a part of your brain, how do you become an expert just by unlocking it when you've never learned it before? It's called, and that's medical science will tell you there's a part of medical science called paranormal science. It, there's no science. Nothing can prove it, but it happens. It happens. Amen? Amen? So if you think life is all physical, you are already at a disadvantage. Now let me say this. Don't spiritualize everything, but make sure you inquire from the spirit about everything. Did you get what I just said? That means that if you have to bath, don't do zindoro. <laughs> I don't sense this water. Zaboro. I feel this water is from the marine world. Eh. Well, water is marine. <laughs> Whatever you do, that water is a marine commodity. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know that one of the CEOs of Apple is a rainbow man. Right? Rainbow. It's not a Christian rainbow. You know, that rainbow is six. The Christian rainbow is seven. There's a difference. It's not the same rainbow. But how many of you realize that when you bought the Apple Watch, you didn't become a rainbow? <laughs> I've been using Apple device. Why didn't you become rainbow? When you drank Starbucks, that was the head of Medusa. Yeah, yeah. Have you not seen? It's a woman on the table. You know, it's actually the queen of the star. That's what the name is. With a star and her long hair. On the Starbucks. Yeah. The coffee. Yeah. <coughs> Visage is Medusa. Yeah. Why is that when you want Visage to a demon didn't possess you? <laughs> I'll explain a lot of things about this. So you get it all. So it's ignorance that makes you superstitious. Knowledge makes you supernatural. So, when you think you are trying to be supernatural, without sufficient knowledge, you enter superstition. So, superstition is always a product of inadequate knowledge of the realm of the spirit. When you have important information about the spiritual realm, you leave superstition, you enter supernatural. You know what is going on. You are not confused. You are aware. We are very sure of what is going on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord. Are you getting some of the examples I'm giving you? Yes. So I'll say this and I'll say to you. The most powerful Christian, I've said it before and I'll say it again, is not him that prays a lot of hours alone. No, that's not what makes you powerful. In fact, somebody will pray hours and somebody will encounter revelation and he will take the lead beyond you. He will, he will outrun you, outclass you in everything. 
Proverbs 24, verse 5. I've shared it and I'll share it again. Verse 5. Those who listen to that message on proper living. He says what? A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Verse 10. The same chapter, so you know it's in context. Verse 10. If you're... If you faint in the day of what? That means that why we are tired and we faint in trouble is insufficient knowledge. When your knowledge is little, you will faint when trouble finds you. It means that when I deal with you and I sit with you here, when I go to Accra, when I sit in the plane, when I meet great people, my knowledge is my strength. Knowledge is not strength. Knowledge is the conduit for strength. Don't get it wrong. Okay? Some, in, in philosophy, we say knowledge is power. That's philosophy. But in the Christian sense, increasing strength is, is, is not just by acquiring the information. Applied knowledge, applied knowledge opens the door for unparalleled dimensions of power. Because you are aware. Every spiritual man, every juju man, every person who is an occult is as strong as the information they have. Listen to what I just said. Every juju man, every occultic man is as strong as the information they have. And I'll explain why as we go on. That means that a lot of you are going to be products of spiritual sabotage because of lack of proper spiritual information. If you had proper spiritual information, the devil has lost half of the battle against you. Because there are things you know that he cannot thrive with you again. He can't win because you know. Let me ask you a question. When Samson got interested in the Timnath woman, the Bible said this woman was pressured by her family members to pressure Samson to give information. Do you know if Samson had knowledge, as soon as Delilah started to say, you don't love me, it's the same thing the Timnath woman of Philistia, his first wife, said, you don't love me. You would have told me the meaning of this riddle and pestered Samson for days. Samson would have immediately realized that there is a parallel. This thing is an influence from another quarter. But Samson's lack of knowledge made him sacrifice his power. That means that a lot of you are seeing things repeat itself in your life, but you don't have substantive knowledge. So you either buttress into the ignorance or superstition that this thing happened to mommy is happening to me again, and you don't even have correct information, so you're superstition. You're not sure what you're saying. Bali <sighs> Hishkopaya. Listen, this year I'm not just going to get miracles. You'll be a miracle. This year, that altar in your family, they are deleting your name from the list. This year, when they mention family members, they will call your spirit and the Lord himself will show up because something has happened to the knowledge you now have. Eh? They know. No, when they know that you when they call you, they are all in trouble. They will not mess with you because you are aware. And they are where you are aware. <laughs> are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Very, very important. So knowledge is, that's why we are teaching you the things we are teaching you right now. And it's important because when you get this understanding, you don't throw away prayer hours. You know what prayer does. You know what prayer does to your spirit, man. Listen, anything that does not resolve by prayer might and can resolve by more prayer. That's why I said to you last week and two weeks ago that sometimes it's not the improper action you are taking. It is lack of intensity. It must be intense. I pray, I pray. That thing is not changing. Add fasting to it. And not just fasting. Separate yourself and go and hide somewhere and pray and see which, what will move. That's how you do it sometimes. Hey, daddy, I've been praying. I don't see change. No, separate yourself. That means that you are determined that this thing has to shift in your life. 
It has to shift. It can't remain like this. How if you calculate your life, it remains like this. You will pass 70, you've not built a bicycle. No, the way life is good, if you don't take care, you can't build a bicycle with this type of life. So you have to come to a point in your life, you have to shift. Shift by intensity. Ask yourself, how do you pray? I ask you, how, how many hours do you pray? So sometimes 12 minutes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I do one hour. Oh, on a good day, if I've rested, I can pray, I can pray. Good, nice. Nice, that's wonderful. But is it intense? One week you say you're praying. Zondoramon, Zondoramon, Zondoramon. In the morning, early in the... Zondoramon, Zondoramon. And you are not concerned that the way you are praying one month, every morning you doze half of the prayer time. And the prayer time cry is no more than 15 minutes. If you are dozing half of it, it means every day you are praying six minutes. Six minutes times seven. That's 42 minutes. It's not up to an hour per week. And half of that prayer is plagued with dozing. A little sleep, a little slumber. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. So now let's understand the supernatural realm. Now, the proof of the supernatural realm is what we quoted last week, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. The fact that there are dimensions and things and objects that we call microscopic indicates that there's also dimensions of objects that are invincible. Invisible. It means that if there's anything that is available in this room, prions, guions, and all those subatomic particles, and my eyes cannot see until I use a certain instrument for verification. Likewise, there are spirits, there are entities, there are principalities my eyes cannot see, but are present. Let me give you an example. When we understand the spirit realm, you understand that even the spirits present in a locality determines the topography. Because if a particle is the reason why a place is coarse, you don't see the sun. But when you sweep, you remove your slippers and say, ah, I feel particles. That means the presence of these entities determines the course the texture of the place. So you go to a place, everybody is struggling with the gay spirit. Everybody is struggling with one born one. Every girl has to have sex and be pregnant. It is the entity that is determining the cause of the cause. That's what Ephesians 2 said. He said, when we were working according, verse 2, according to the course of this world. So we we're working according to the world of this world. There was a course of the world. That means there are entities that are responsible for causing you in a certain way of life. I'll give you an example. Every location that has once dealt with slave trade reparations that were not properly settled, South Africa, America, first thing is sexual immorality is high. Number two, exposure of body. Number three, excessive piercing. And chains. So what we call pop culture, hip-hop culture, is a derivative from slavery. Because we were once in chains, it's okay to still be in chains. It's, it's, you go to South Africa, same thing happens. And so you find out that in these two particular provinces, there is a certain dimension of texturing. Ghana looks like a gateway, but most black Americans will prefer South Africa. Because it has a texturing that is similar to the environment they are coming from. They are still belaboring and shouting against the white man that he's, the respons he's responsible for their problems. I'm not saying the white man didn't create problems. But I'm saying if you keep shouting at this time, when they didn't lash your back as a slave, I don't see why you are thinking like that. You are not Kunta Kente. <laughs> you are not in the cotton field, yet you are trying to benefit from the pain. Of those who were in the cotton field. Mm -hmm. You don't even know the hymns of the slave. Yet you say, because of slavery, we are where we are. You are not thinking well. You are really not thinking well. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
It's like somebody going to take lashes for you and you cry for the person and say, ah, it's painful, oh. You didn't collect the lash, yet you are the one saying, ah, shh, that was painful. No. That's not the truth. Can I tell you black people? <laughs> Can I tell you something, black people? Can I tell you something? You are the most powerful people on this earth. Do you know why I say what I say? Any generation or any species that is consistently attacked, forced, killed, f destroyed is because the other species are intimidated. So why are you still thinking like a slave when you actually have the power? If you go to China and the Chinese people is confused about you, stand there. Eh? The pastor told me, he said he went to China when he was in the hotel lobby. As soon as he turns, everybody turns their head. Like they've not seen a black person before. When you even speak Chinese language, they think you are a white person who has painted your skin with tar. Because you are too fluent in Mandarin. It, it must be a fluke. How ignorant must you be to call the whole of Africa a country? <laughs> Yet we are the ones who are going to UNICEF for international intervention for education. You guys need to be educated. Because half of you don't think Africa is a continent. You still call Africa a country. And we're on trees, and we, 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 we drink milk from the udder of a goat. And when we are in a hurry to go to the office, we sit on the back of the cow. That's how, that's how we go to work. We sit on cows to go to work. And you believe that in the 21st century, in a time where you can Google and find the information you are looking for, ignorant. And you stand there and say, the person is calling you racist. You are subjecting yourself to a reality you have long escaped. I've not said I've not been to races. I've, I, I went somewhere, we're about to enter the place. The people ask us, have we, have, we, have, we, have we lost? Yeah, because I knew that, like, we are black, so what are you doing this? Or why? I said, have we lost? I said, oh, okay. I said, Sir, we are going. We are doing our business elsewhere. I have the money. If I'm lost, who loses? <laughs> if you say I'm lost, who loses? I'm carrying my money away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me ask you another question. Amongst all the races of the world, unfortunately, is the Africans who have cried a lot about our racism. Do you know there were white slaves once upon a time? In fact, Irish slaves. Do you know there were slaves of Jews? But the Jews braced themselves up and stopped crying and started working. Let me ask you a question. After all our blame game, when you get a million dollars, you still go and buy a chain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they have freed you, but you still want that chain that puts you in bond. So you see a black American, and you say, I'm iced up. <laughs> Can I announce to you, it's still the Kunta Kente chain with a little bit of diamond. It's still the same chain. So not to remind anybody of the flesh, but there's a man called Mr. Bob Marley. Emancipate yourself for mental slavery. So slavery has never been an issue. It's just that we decided that we will give excuses for lack of hard work on the white man. When we sit in the plane, they are coming to Africa to mine our gold. And we are going there to enjoy the, the processed product from your own country. Can you imagine that? I'm not preaching a political message. Let me just <laughs> remember the spirit. <laughs> am, I, am I preaching? I get what I'm talking about. So there's, a, there's an age that's in charge. If you go to North Carolina, if you go to New Orleans, you go to all those people, those people have major problems in terms of their weather. And one of the reasons why they have a problem in terms of the weather is because it's around their shore the slaves that made it to America, a certain batch of slaves actually, decided to drown themselves. So when they got to America, they decided not to disembark. They all got down into the boat. So when you go to New Orleans, that shoreline, you see them inside the water and they intentionally drowned by force. That they'll be slaves, they'll rather kill themselves. So they are entities of spirits 
that causes even their cyclonic over, over, over. Go and check every area that was wicked in slavery in America. They suffer typhoons and hurricanes. I'm trying to bring your mind to something. Oh. The entities in the spiritual realm determine topography. Don't joke with these things I'm saying. Rado <laughs> Sanzayamanda. You will not find forest spirits in the desert. That means that they curate, they allow the environment to thrive for themselves. So before you, you don't find evil forest in the desert. Evil forest is in forest regions. Every region that has thick forest, there will by all means be a forest they call the evil forest. I don't know if God will help me to even give you the strata of these spirits so you can understand that even in the spiritual realm of Satan, there are rankings and they are not together like that. They are unified against one enemy, but they will kill themselves at any day. You misbehave. The land spirits which are in the mountains and the rocks and the forest are different from the flying spirits. And those ones are also different from the water spirits. Everyone and what they bring. Message Jesus. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to bring your mind to is this the moment you ever think you need a microscope to see something that you can't see with your eyes, it's indicative that there is proof of an unseen realm. Because if you, even the natural things, you can't see the dust until you do this, that means you have used this to verify. Yet, when you even do this, you can't even tell how many dust particles are on your hand, whether it's 15,000 or 1 million, until you put it under a microscope. Then you can verify individual crystals that have formed that dust. And in fact, you'll be surprised. When you do this, it looks like dust. Till you put it under the microscope, your skin is part. Half of the dust in your room is shed skin. So when you do a little bit of forensic science or forensic, you know, you want to investigate who has been in any room. You just go for their dust and put it. You will see their epithelial cells, their, their foreskin. Hey, don't even go far. Secondary school, when you don't bath, don't you rub it. You see that brown thing that comes off? It's part of the dust. <laughs> it's part of the dust. And they turn to check if you are bad. They put their hand behind your ears like this. That thing, that thing that peels off, that's what we call the epithelial cells. You are always shedding literally every day. It's, so yes, it's the top of your skin. It's the Come, that's why you bath. When you bath, have you seen, you look okay till you bath, then the water is brown. <laughs> it's not dust, it's your skin. Your skin is fat. You are shedding, plus the dust of whatever filth you've met in the day. What I'm trying to bring your mind to is this, that that tells you a lot of things, that so many things are happening around you, but your eyes are not able to capture it. Likewise, so many things are happening in the spirit. The fact that you don't see does not mean it doesn't exist. And this is where a lot of people get it off. Because they don't see it and you tell them in prophecy, they take it for granted that, ah, I don't think this is true. Till many months later, they go like, man of God, no, no, everything you said was true. Hey, what I've seen, I now believe. And it might be too late. It might be too late. Lift your hands to Jesus. I say my spirit is open up. I understand the words of God. Say, I understand the words of God. Even in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm trying to explain to you something about the spiritual realm. <laughs> Hebrews 11.3. Go there. All right. So he says that so that the things which were created were not made from things which do appear. So I'm saying that based on this statement alone, we can understand that there's a realm of events, there's a realm of things. Let me ask you another question. The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, the verse number 35. Luke 24, 35. Uh-huh, next verse. Next. Uh-huh. Okay, no, go back to 30. He sat at meat, uh-huh, next verse, and took and blessed it. And, and what? 
and they, and he, he didn't vanish into heaven. He vanished out of their sight. Now, if Jesus is alive, he has come from the dead, and he's sitting, all of a sudden he vanishes, they can't see him again. Yet he's in the room. It means he has translocated his body that can be seen to a realm it cannot be seen. Yet he's there. He didn't vanish out into heaven. It means he was still in the room, but he just went, it, went into another universe. You see, this thing you call multiverse. <laughs> okay. He, 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 he was there, but was in another realm that was not visible to this eye. Because the word vanish out. Do you have passion? Passion translation. All at once, their eyes were open and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly in a flash, Jesus vanished before their eyes. Um, Amplify classic. <clears throat> and Jesus vanished, departed invisibly. So he has translocated his visible form into another realm they cannot tell. Please listen to what I'm saying very well. If you understand this, you understand that. We are seated here in church. But this thing you see, many times the spiritual realm has been taught in such a way that when you go and sleep, it comes alive. It's not true. Whilst we are here, the spiritual realm is also actively a parallel. The spiritual realm is a parallel to this realm. <laughs> that means that if the spiritual realm is a parallel to this realm, Oh, I'm going out of myself. Let me hold myself. Wave your hands to Jesus. Him who cost you. Amen. First Corinthians 12 verse 1. Let me show you another scripture. And then, I'm trying to introduce the thing. That's why I'm taking my time like this. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Do you have the Passion Translation? Passion Translation, verse 1. Just stay at verse 1 for me. Now, this, I like this. You see, King James says gifts, but see what he said here. My fellow believers, I don't want you to be confused about spiritual realities. I, it means a lot of people are confused about spiritual realities. There is no scripture in the Bible that God reveals to redeem. That's a very lazy way of not doing anything about what you saw. Rabba by the Lord, you revealed to redeem. Eh, eh. I told you last time, what if he revealed to prepare? What if God revealed to you to prepare that, ah, you have come to Bombo, prepare. The bomb you bomb. Did you hear what Jesus said to Peter in Luke chapter 22? Simon, Simon, Satan sought to sift you as sweet, but I've prayed for you that when your faith fails and is restored, you restore your brethren. It is a Satan, I've prayed for you when Satan sought you. So that you don't fall. He said that your faith should not fail. The falling, you will fall. <laughs> That's what Jesus literally said. He said, I can't stop Satan from causing you to fall. The fall, you are going to fall. Because how you went about it, I can't stop it. And I explain why this is a serious matter. It's not that he will not stop it. He can't. A lot of you think Jesus can do everything when it comes to the spiritual realm. But Jesus can't do everything. I've got your attention. And I mean everything I just said. I didn't say he's powerless. He can't because of something. There's a reason Jesus can't interfere with a lot of things that happen in the spiritual realm. So Paul said, I will not have you confused about spiritual realities. So there are realities in the spirit. There are realities that affect your study. You were fine till something touched your head. You started getting confused. Have you ever noticed it? Yeah. You, were, you could learn, but all of a sudden something happened. Pew, you're off. Don't you ever joke with spiritual realities. Otherwise, you'll always be a victim, not a victim. There's a pastor whose daughter got crippled. My powerful man of God, we all celebrate. He never gave up. He kept praying. One day he said he was in office. He started shouting, no, no, I will not permit it. I... Listen. He said, you finish a powerful miracle. 
come home and come and lay hands on his daughter, the daughter will still not walk. But the whole point was that he understood spiritual realities. And do you know what happened? That operation of consistency was like watering the bamboo tree. He said one day he was in his office. His daughter walked by herself. But somebody will say, oh, okay, that means that when something happens to somebody in my house, I will just hand it on to the lawn. <laughs> they will just wake up one day. Eh? 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 The right time. <laughs> You'll be shocked. <laughs> you will be shocked. So actually, if you don't understand spiritual realities, you can't even know when to be persistent. And understand your persistence is like the watering of a bamboo plant. For the first two years, it will not show growth till the third year, and it will sprout all of a sudden. And that's the problem we are suffering today. A lot of us are living by assumption. We assume that because some of these testimonies like this, mine too will go like that. It doesn't work like that. It's because of the lack of understanding of spiritual realities. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The topography of northern territories makes that any person who comes from that realm is a little bit aggressive and serious with God. Take any northern territory in the world. In fact, the Bible says that trouble comes from the north. <laughs> so northern Ghana Christians, northern Nigeria Christians, they are different. Southern Christian, Kina Binchi, only food, eating food all the time. <laughs> but north, you see war, you see hunger, you see spirits, you see entities. So when you become a Christian, you are really a Christian. <laughs> it's the same with the water region. Was <laughs> it You can't. You, you can't come from the Vota region and you are taking God serious. You won't take God serious. One day you wake up and you're like, oh. you can't see. You just wake up, you can't see. Uh, uh. <laughs> you went to do fasting and prayers uh, tomorrow, you actually. You wake up like, uh. your auntie will appear and say, How dare you? <laughs> yes. So, my dear. Based on where you, you are coming from, perhaps you can chill a little. Where I'm coming from, you can't chill like that. <laughs> because every day you pray, they are marking the calendar. He said, one day you hear something. <laughs> if we like, you keep praying. One day you will just visit you all of a sudden. And may you not be prepared well. We will show you pepper. Amen? Amen. It means that by spiritual reality, say, can I show you a secret today? There are some temptations you escaped as a young man. You should expect that they are coming, it will come to your children. Oh, yeah. And you should prepare them and tell them that, listen, when I was 14, 15, 16, these things happened. And I'm suspecting it's coming your way too. <laughs> Preaching a message. Spiritual reality. That's why I like what Bishop Wedipo said. Stop preparing the future for your children and prepare them for the future. It's two different things. Stop buying cars. As for my children, do not suffer. As for our, that thing is pampering kids. The day they meet the demons you should have defeated, you will see that that cows and car you gave them is a, mis a mistake. That's why you see a boy coming has become a junkie because you were preparing the future for him. What a pity. You should prepare your children for the future. It's two different things. Me in the way they beat me, so I don't want to beat my children. Ah, ah, they beat us. Yeah, thou shalt be beaten. <laughs> Listen, if you're a parent here, don't subscribe to this wrong. The Bible says, spare the rod, not the palm. The rod, not the palm. In beating your children and correcting them, you don't beat them like manslaughter and <laughs> assault. You don't see your child and say, boom, boom, silly boy, foolish goat. Then, no, that's it, wrong. That's, that's not what the Bible calls discipline. Discipline is rod, thy rod and thy staff. This is the rod. He said, it is in comforting. I'm lashing you to comfort you. <laughs> don't use chalote, don't use shoe. The rod. The rod and thy staff. 
No banku driver. You know that banku driver? <laughs> Wire belt. No. It's the, use the rod. Not the stick, not water hose. <laughs> the rod. It's the rod. Use the rod. Because can I tell you something? Pain is a teacher. The things you didn't get pain from, you still go for. But when there is pain, you swear. You can remember the bleeding. You can remember the scar. This road will not pass here again. Yeah. So when you come home, my dear, lift your hands. I love you. So I need to lash you. Because the Bible says, if I spare the rod, I'll spoil the child. And I'm a Christian. <laughs> Who lives by the word of God? I cannot give, I cannot pray, I cannot fast and forget lash. So as part of a Bible practicing Christian, lift your hand. Pew, pew, pew. And for them to know that you don't hate them, if you bought them toffee from town, give them the toffee. You see, it becomes an indemnity on their psyche concerning you. When you are beating them and deny them certain things. I lashed you. That's not mean you can't watch TV. So we are actually doing the reverse. We won't lash you, but it's absence of TV. Absence of phone. It is a reverse system. You are rather letting the child grow up to dislike you. I'm lashing you, but your TV time, I will not stop it. Oh. Let me continue. This one is parenting. Someone say, I'm going to ask for me. We'll see where they'll be in future. It's just a matter of time. Everybody's training tells them where they'll get to. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So I, want, I don't want to be confused about spiritual realities. Now, if he's saying he doesn't want us to be confused about spiritual realities, how does this realm of the spirit work? Now, I'm going to say a lot of things that, like I said, it's verified, of course, from scripture, but it's not typical things that are taught. So sometimes our minds, Father, I cancel like, again every spiritual cognitive dissonance. Let the word of God be received as it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in Genesis 1, verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I've not started my message. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heaven and the earth. Now, notice the language he uses here. God created the heaven and the earth. Now, go to the verse number 14. Let's read together. I want to go. Next verse. And it was so. Next verse. And the lesser light to the night. He made the stars also. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Yet in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. Let's go there. Let's read together. I want to go. Now, there's a confusion. Why did he say the earths and the heavens? Genesis 1 1 says he created one heaven, one earth. <coughs> but chapter 2, verse 4 says heavens. It has become plural all of a sudden. Now, let me say something that will help you again. Creation, formation, whatever it is, actually literally happened once. But what you are seeing in Genesis 2, you know, it's, sorry, sorry, this is creation, this is formation. Actually, when you check Genesis 2, verse 4 downwards, that is the summary 
of creation. So Genesis 2, 4, right up to the time Eve comes, is a summary because the creation ends in verse 3 of Genesis 2. Genesis 2, verse 3. What I say? And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, and rested from that which he had made. If you say Genesis 4 is another work, then you are saying after the seventh day, God had to resume work again to form man. That means from Genesis 1, verse 3, to Genesis 2, 3, is creation. 2, 4 is addendum, explanation, exposition, expansion of how 1, 3, down to four, um, chapter 2, before he rested. Because if you say he rested, then the Lord now comes again, verse 5. There was no tree because there was no man. So God decided to form. But I thought he's resting. What is he coming to create again? And the whole point about Kadosh is because there is man. That is why go to verse 4. Go to verse 4. The name Yahweh never appears until man shows up. So chapter 2 verse 4 means by this time he is narrating an operation of an existing entity. Man is already alive. A realm of the spirit. Eh? Do you understand? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I know, I know what I'm saying what I'm saying. So you can get what I'm come to show you. So in Genesis 1 1, God creates the heaven and the earth. But he says, in the beginning. Yet John 1 1 says something. Let's go to John 1 1. I janet to. Okay. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word. Now there's a translation that says the word was a God. The word was a God. There's a translation like that. And that's a wrong. Whatever it is. Small, a, small G-O-D. That's, that's another translation. And that's not correct. But the correct translation actually takes the definite article out. It says in beginning was. And the word here was is igeneto. Okay. So in beginning, igeneto means already existing. The word. And the word, this word was with, was speaks of time. Time has elapsed. But it was not, it's not translated as was. It's an existent state that's ever present. And the word with is the word pros. So in beginning, pre-existed or already existed the word. And the word existing before God or existing toward God because God the literal Greek was the word. So the word and God were having a certain relationship. Proverbs 8, verse 30. Let's read it together. One to go. Of course, Revelation chapter 12 says, Revelation 19 says, Jesus Christ is the word of God. So what he's trying to tell you is this, that the word was before him, in front of him. The word was toward him. The word was having affinity, proximity to God. So God, the Father, and the word, which is the Son, were face to face each other. That's the word pros. Face to face each other from the beginning. And he says, this is what we were doing. I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing ever in front of him. Are we together? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Then we go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. So every time we are talking of beginnings, measure it like this. So you can understand what is happening in Genesis 1 1. That beginning was a certain beginning of time, but not from our time. Lift your hands to Jesus. Bless the Lord. <laughs> bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Now, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, 
that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Now, of course, we, we talked about this. Before him in love. Next verse. He predestined us as unto the adoption of children of Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, his plan. So, there was a plan that was before God. Listen to what I'm going to say very well. There was a plan before God, before Genesis 1-1 began. Now, Genesis 1-1, if you do a proper study of it, you'll notice that even if you're, com you're confused about it, there was a day in that process, in chapter 2, verse 3, that did not have a night. The Lord God rested on the Sabbath day and called it holy, the seventh day. There is no eighth day. There was evening and morning, the eighth day. It, he got, he said, <laughs> he, the Lord rested on the seventh day. All the days, it was sixth day, morning, evening, fifth day, morning, evening, fourth day. But when he got to seventh day, Genesis 2, 3, he says, and the Lord God rested on the seventh day, sanctified it. There was no evening and morning recorded here. That means that when Adam showed up, there was no night nor day. God was with him like that. God was enjoying Adam's presence. Are we together? Yeah. I'm going to say something that will, that's why I said I, I'm saying something to say something. Genesis 1 1 in beginning was not a beginning of the clock we have, it was a beginning of a time before time. You got that? It was the beginning of what? A time before time. There I even say it this way. This is the beginning of something we called eternity. And many rab rabbi rabbis interpret it as eternity because it is in chapter 14 the matter of days and hours. Go there, verse 14. See what it says. And they shall be for days and years. That means that prior to day four, there were no days and years. It means that everything that happened day one, day two, day three, was occurring before days began. So this is the day, the rabbis say, time was created. Hmm. Isn't it weird that vegetation began before time? So that when we enter eternity, there's a tree. That will still give us fruit in eternity. No, because listen. <laughs> this is a little heavy, but you need to understand it like this because... If I don't explain like this, you don't even understand how witches, demons have their right to be in the realm of the spirit. Do you think the realm of the spirit is only where the Holy Ghost is? No, 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 no. Where, where are witches operating from? Where? Mass? Where, where do? No, tell me. The realm of the spirit. It's a spiritual realm. Oh, okay, let me, because I said realm of the spirit, I didn't say realm of the Holy Spirit, I said realm of the spirit. It's a very vast statement. So if you saw the realm of the spirit, and that's why I mentioned the, the synonyms of supernatural. And I told you on the first service that it is supernatural, not just for Christians. The word supernatural is also paranormal. That means demons, ghosts, apparitions, they are also in that realm. You get it? I didn't say the realm of the Holy Spirit. I said the realm of the Spirit. And that is vast. If you want to put it in a jackal phrase, you say spiritual realm. That sounds better, right? That makes you think, okay, demons can be there. It's the same thing. The realm of the Spirit, demons are also there. This is the reason why, listen, I'll, I'll give you an example. Oh, I wish I could. There are places these spirits, I told you, they determine topography. One of the places these spirits show is this. Go to a 63rd story building. That's building in Ghana, how many floors? 28? Less than that. The highest building in Ghana. Hey. Villagio is how many? 15 floors? My God. How many? 24 Villagio. 
Yeah, so I think the highest should be, let's just be generous to Ghana. The highest building in Ghana is about 30 floors. Let's just, Ghanaians don't like height. <laughs> you better sit in a plane with Ghanaians and when the thing loses, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Ghanaians don't like, you see the white people are comfortable, we small turbulence, we'll call on the name of the Lord, Jehovah Chidekeno, the cleansing powers of the, uh, Moses and Abraham. Everybody will come in that plane. <laughs> Amen. Now listen to what I'm saying. When you, that's even the 30th floor. If you've traveled out before, there are buildings that are one for the, and, and recently we went, to, I think Friday, we in a lift, and as soon as we entered the lift, the elevator, I said, why are Ghanaian elevators slow like that? Like, it's slow. The person you go to, with, the same time it takes a Ghanaian lift, how many floors? 30, they had, ah, I was, I was prophetic. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, so the same four floors that would take a Ghanaian lift to finish, you can do that 77 floors in Dubai or somewhere. You are down. It does not go. You know how Ghana's own go. One. And you don't know whether the lift is going to buy Wachi and come back. I don't, like, it's, is it person? What is, why? One, two, my God. <laughs> You sit in certain, some of the, oh my God, all right. You sit in the elevator, 72, 72, like, what would, from zero to one in Ghana, you would have dropped about 20 floors outside. You can feel it. You are going. <laughs> Very fast. Do you understand? I get it. Now, you'll be surprised. As soon as you get to heights, now I'm going to say something that will help you and bless you. It's the same spirit operation that came to speak to Jesus. Jump. Who has ever been on a high building and you heard the voice? Jump. Do you know, you, and you know the shocking thing? You thought it was your mind. But they were demons that are, they are demons positioned on height. I'm preaching something. If you understand this, eh, you will now know that there are some places when you sleep and wake up, a voice will tell you to misbehave. And you thought it was your thought. Go and look for a girl and sleep with her. It was not you. It is the house. It is the location. Whatever environment you've exposed yourself to, voices are speaking. But you think it is you who taught it. Why would Jesus feel like jumping? For the devil to find it a viable temptation to say, if you jump, angels will hold you. Because you can't be tempted beyond your desire. That means that Jesus was desiring to jump. Wow. That's why Jesus said, jump. Angels will hold you. You jump. You'll be shocked. Are you not the son of God? <laughs> they will catch you. Jump. So can I tell you something? 99% of suicide, that came because people jumped. A voice spoke. And they thought it was their mind. A spirit was communicating. If you don't, you see, someone to understand this. As soon as I get to that height and I hear a voice, jump. I say, don't be silly. Silly voice. Come on, shut up there. And I continue my life. And the voice starts, shut up. Because I know it's not Adam. Even you don't know it's you, you think it's you, so you don't even know how to rebuke it. Hey, why am I thinking like that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say high fever. <laughs> you have high fever. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Something said jump. Hey, high fever. Hallelujah. Are you here? No, I know this, this, this is not how it's usual, but I'm just trying to explain to you. If you take your time and study the Bible very well, you understand that what was going on here, and this, this I said to you, I sat down with the, a rabbi, and he explained to me the Muad, you know, the seasons of the Hebrews, and the days, Yom, and the years, all these things. He said, that's the day God literally created time. That's the day God literally created time. That means that prior to that, there was an operation in eternities. Why? How do I know that that's true? The feminine, according to Genesis 1 verse 8, is the only location God could not call good. Because there were entities there. I'll show you some locations in the, in the earth. Hey. Yeah. The higher heights, the deeper seas, whatever you do, Lord, do it. 
glory, the glory of God fills my life and I, and I will, will never, never be, the, be same the same again and I, and I will never be the same so what is happening now is this Can we go back? Yeah. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 8, God called the feminine heaven. So now, let's go to the story then. How did we come by the realm of the spirit? How did we? How did we come by the realm of the spirit? What caused it to exist? Now remember, firstly, Paul in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, sorry, the verse number 1. It's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one, or an one, caught up to the third heaven. Caught up to the what? Third heaven. Note that scripture down. Now, like I said to you, when God created the heavens and the earth, God designed the heaven to be a location he would reduce himself to for the purpose of entering time. God created heaven, much more eternity, to be the realm that could hold his humiliation for the purpose of his kenosis or his humanity. So God decided to create a realm that can hold his humiliation, his reduction. Literally, God actually enfolded himself into eternity so that he could enter time. God could not exit his realm straight into time. Do you know what that means? This is the reason why even in the glorification of Jesus Christ, Jesus could not be glorified on earth. Jesus had to first be exalted out of the earth. Ascension, when he entered glory, before he was glorified. If they glorify Jesus on the earth, the earth could not contain that glory. That's why Jesus himself said it in John chapter 17. Glorify them with the glory I had. Not I have, I had. It means I put that glory down. If I bring it into the earth, it will work. This earth can contain glory. So what God did was that he, he did a, 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 a the, chemist, the chemist call it something, the reducible agents. Eh? He did reduction to his glory. And he did it in phases. You see, God does not dwell in eternity. It is reverse. It is eternity that rather dwells in God. Because if we say that Genesis 1-1 is the beginning in time, but Ephesians 1-1 is the beginning out of time, and the moment you use beginning, you have mentioned time. That means... There was a time that began time. Yeah. And the time that began time is called eternity. So even eternity is a time. And when moment is time, then it is outside God. Are you here? So let me shock you. Time can be occupied by material decomposable bodies. But eternity is occupied by glorified bodies. But there's another realm called the realm of God. <laughs> let me come down. Let me come down. Before today's people say, I went too heavy. It was too heavy for you. Please, are you following me thus far? 
Are you, are you, are you still following? Yes. You are not lost? We are understanding the things I'm saying. Uh -huh. Okay. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 So, when God was now doing Genesis chapter 2 verse 4, he had actually done something that was very remarkable. And I'm going to show you how this worked. So, once upon a time, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth, according to Genesis 1 verse 1. And in that creation, God formed the angels. God formed different strata in that, in that dimension. And remember, all of this did not precede his plan. His plan was in Genesis chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 4 and 5. There was a will that God had. God willed it. According to Revelations 4 verse 11, he did everything for his pleasure. Pleasure there also is his will. Okay? So if you, is it, um, is it uh, passion or amplified classical? So he used the word will. Are we there? Passion or amplified classic? Uh-huh. Yeah, your will. By your will. So pleasure is the will. The will of God. Are you here? Now, this will, he's saying that, is the basis for everything that was created. The angels, eternity, glory, everything was because of the will of God. So God already had a plan. And God said, this is the plan we are going to, we are going to face it out. The first phase is that God, who does not speak, and God who does not talk, must exist as the word. Because the word, or a word, is the explanation of the thought of a person. So God said, so if you check the theology of Christ or Christology, his pre-existent state is called the word or wisdom. Before he was born, he was called the word. Before he was born, he was called wisdom. And where was he as the word? In eternity. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Don't do that to me. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Ah, I've talked to Jesus and around the spirit. You are still looking like this is too new to you. Anyways, let me continue. So, God now created the eternal realm to contain the eternal beings, the everlasting beings, angels, uh, all those entities. Lucifer was there at the time. And the Bible says, in the, when, I mean, I've taught this before, so you can go and check that, that teaching on the rights of righteousness. What again? I also taught on the legalities. I spoke a little about it. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. Lucifer was an angel that was created to live in the eternal realm or the realm of the everlasting ones. Okay? So in that realm, spirits dwell there. That's where spirits dwell. That's why the Bible says, just a little while, he makes his angels winds or spirits and his ministers flames of fire. So spirits dwell in that realm. It's, an, it's a conducive environment for spirits. All right? And the Bible says, when you die, you become a spirit of a just man that has been perfected. That means that you can have your motion. You can have your touch. You can have a form. That's the perfection of a, the spirit of a just man. It's a semblance to a body. But you are still spirit. Are we together? Yes. Okay. So what this means is that when God now created, okay, he created the realm of the supernatural or the realm of the spiritual. But the point is this, that in that realm, there was a blueprint by which that realm came into existence. Do you know that in that realm, before Moses ever showed up on earth, God had already designed the tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 8.5. God didn't draw the tabernacle when Moses was born. It was already a pattern in heaven. In fact, heaven was patterned like the tabernacle. So what earth was creating was a product of what heaven had. <laughs> it means that, it means that the physical realm is a replica of the spiritual realm. So what you call virtual reality is actually you that are the virtual. Second Corinthians 4.18. <laughs> Can we read together? Can we read together? Want to go? Wow. 
things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are so you sitting here are actually the virtual reality. Do you have passion translation? I mean, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You are the virtual reality. You are the alternative of the real universe. <laughs> you see what he said? He said, for what is seen is temporary, is temporary, but the unseen realm is eternal. The unseen realm is the eternal realm. So we are all templates. We are all duplicates of a realm we cannot see. Hebrews 8.5. Hebrews 8.5. This is the reason why I said that if you don't understand the supernatural realm, you will always be at a disadvantage because you are trying to correct in the virtual realm what you should correct in the unseen. See what he says? He says, uh-huh, see that what? Who served an example? Oh, oh, oh. And he said, God said to him that he should build according to the, mount, the pattern which was shown him in the mountain. That means God had already designed heaven and the patterns of the, the tabernacle. So when God said, let the cubits be this, let the, this be this, God was not surprised concocting things. That's what was waiting for somebody to download. Is the reason why I told you the last time about, and of course this year we'll touch on it, the prophetic ministry. I don't prophesy what I want. I prophesy what has already been written. Otherwise, it's not prophecy. It's wishes. If I'm telling you something that is not written, it is a wish. Who is it that says a thing and it comes to pass when God has not confirmed or commanded? The word command means God has already declared its existence. That's the reason why we even see. What are you reading from? I see you in America. And God will give you three children. It's not Adam who wants to tell you nice words. God has written three children about your life. And you know the shocking thing? You've dreamt about it. You've discussed it with your husband. So how come the prophet is confirming it? Because written in the volumes of the book is to do that well by giving birth to three children. So it's not a man forcing three children on you. It is what is written. It cannot be prophecy if it's not consistent with what God has written about a person's life. Let me repeat it again. Some of you, everybody says something about you, you are happy. It's not prophecy if it is not what God has written. So what they are building on earth has already been built in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 10. Didn't he say it in his prayer? When Jesus came to pray, look what Jesus said. And this is the thing I like about Jesus. So see what he said. Come on, come on, let's go there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it has been done. Not as it will be, as it is. It means God's will has already been finished in heaven. It's the earth that is doing catch up. Oh my God. And that's why if you don't understand the spiritual realm, you will try to harness, stop a problem from the wrong realm and it will still foster problems in your life. You have to enter the realm where the problem was caused and handle it from there. A certain woman had a problem with her cars and she contacted the prophet. And the prophet was praying, Zandorobu Fakdiradada. As he was praying, he said, Ah, what is he saying? And he called the lady, he said, lady, this is what the Lord told me to do. He said, open all your tracks, about four of them, tipper tracks. The tracks that carry sand, sand tracks. And he said, go and fetch sand from one of your trips and pour it in all the engines. He said, why? He said, that's what I saw, pour it there. Why? Because in the spirit. <laughs> you understand? The excavators came to pour certain things. And it's the sand that will neutralize it. Mm -hmm. So he said, pour sand in all the engines. As soon as the woman poured the sand in all her four engines, the engine started working. That means you will carry it to mechanic, but they have poured something on that engine. Mechanic will, and what am I showing, going to show you today? When you don't know this, two things happen. You will need assistance. And if the assistant is not knowledgeable, you are losing your cars. That's how serious the realm of the spirit is. It makes no excuses for ignorance. That because you are attempting, if you don't know what you are doing, it's not responding. 
That's why sometimes we tell people, do this. We're like, prophet, I don't know. It's not, it's, hey, hey, hey. Sometimes in the spirit, we hear that this work, it will take two years to repair. Sometimes in the spirit, we even hear that this person you are with was never God's plan to start with. But you are fighting it and it's going to take you another four years. Zaba, zaba, zaba. Sum, sum, sem. You see why sometimes I don't veer into this place too much? Because the technicalities are so mad that if you don't take care, people forget the Holy Ghost and start following this. It's the reason why he gave us the Holy Ghost. It's the reason why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Listen, can I tell you something today? And I'm going to repeat it again. Child of God, your disobedience is costing you. When the Lord tells you to wake up at five, five means something. If you know God well enough, God is not careless with his words. So when he says, wake up at five, give $5,000, it's not God who is wicked. He knows why he mentioned that amount. <laughs> Keep playing games with God. You are the very cause of so many things that have slowed down. It's not anybody, it's you. I like what Pastor Benny said recently. He says, your greatest enemy before Satan is self. Satan gives you self-destructive engineering before he shows up. So Satan is like David who has come for the end of the battle. Joab said, come, we have won the battle. Come and name it. That's what Satan does. Many of your fights was with you, not Satan. It started with you, the flesh, you. You were the fat, first start of the fight. So the will of God is already done in heaven. Your marriage is already done. That is why Ephesians 1 says he has already blessed you, verse 3, with all spiritual blessing. It's not he will bless you. He has blessed. It is already done. Your car, your house, your glory. But the problem is that it is in a location called heavenly places. That's why the greatest definition of spiritual maturity is aligning your earthly experience to your heavenly state. The more you align what God said you are to how you live your life, that's maturity. You are already seated with Christ. So when you line up your life to the seated position in Christ, maturity. That's it. You are already holy. You are already, you are already righteous. You are already in love. You are already carrying the fruit of the spirit. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, the verse number 27, it says that, that he may present unto himself a church without spot, without wrinkle. He, the tense that is used there is aorist. It's already done. Do you know Ephesians 5? This statement that he might present, this that he might present is aorist. Jesus has already presented the whole a glorious church. That means that maturity is that the church will have no spot, wrinkle in its experience. In its state, it is blem without blemish. But in its experience, there are blemishes. So Christian maturity is aligning your experience to what God has said. That is the goal of Christian maturity. That's why many times, Lord, heal me. He says, you are healed. And you're like, I'm feeling pain. It means the ability to align what you feel versus what he has said is where you are getting to maturity. Because many times when God speaks, he's not speaking from the earth realm. Revelation 4. What did he say? Revelation 4 verse 1. What did he say? He says, and I look, oh my God. Next, next, verse, verse 3. Ah, verse 3. Verse 4. If I go back to verse 2, I think that's it. Verse 2. What did verse 2 say? Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, that was said before me. Now go to verse 1. This is what verse 1 says. He says what? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, uh-huh, and I heard a voice say, come up hither. So without being in the spirit, you can't hear his voice. Without being in the spirit, you can't hear his voice. So when you say God is not talking to you, you are just in a different realm. That realm, you won't hear God. That's why God knows you can't hear him, so he uses physical things to touch you. Yeah, when you're in a club, goom, 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 goom. what made you go to the club? God can't even come directly to you. Do you know what he will do? He will send the barman and say, ah, you don't look like somebody who comes to club. What are you doing here? All of a sudden, you know God just spoke to you. Jesus. You know, the person will say, ah, you don't look like someone who drinks. Why? Why? 
Like you look like you don't fit. As soon as you hear that, you know that God was trying to talk, but the, the music has drowned your ears. So he has to use the, bar, the bouncer to tell you you are not coming. <laughs> if like try it, follow your friends to a club. As soon as you get to the entrance, you, you will enter. The bouncer will bounce you, say you won't go. Then when you tell you, say, I mean, I knew I shouldn't have been here. Go and ask Jonah. If you hear God, God knows how to reach you. That means there's a frequency that makes hearing God very easy. Very easy. Very easy. Are you here with me? Are you sure I'm getting it? So the realm of the spirit is designed in such a way that its topography is amazing. God created the angels, every, every entity, the four living creatures, 24 elders, all of them were created and they are, and they are in heaven. The Bible says, all for his glory, all for his pleasure. God does not stay in heaven. If God, where God stays is called glory. God does not stay in heaven. So it means that he has to be apart from the eternal. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God. And for you to have a name, it means you have existence. And for you to have existence, you need support. But if you listen to this statement, in the beginning, God, it means that he did not become God because he created heaven. He didn't become God because he could stay in heaven. Where was he staying to create heaven and earth? In the beginning, Adam made the speaker. In the beginning, Adam built this building. What that means is that wherever I was staying throughout the building process, it's higher than where I built. Yeah. So wherever God was, is apart from what he created. Yeah. That's why I say to you that God does not live in eternity. It is reversed. He created it to humble himself. Is it there? Psalm 113 verse 5. It's there. It's in the Bible. Psalm 113 verse 5. Today is part one, so don't worry. I'm taking my time so you get it. Psalm 113 verse 5. Who is like unto the Lord our God? Who dwelleth on high? Comma. He's not ended the sentence. Verse 6. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? Do you have passion translation? Aha, verse 6. He stoops down to look upon the sky and the earth. That means that for God to look at the sky and the earth, he has to stoop. Why is he staying there? He has to stoop down. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. Are you here? Yes. So, what I'm trying to bring your mind to is that that's how God created the realm of the spirit. Or the spiritual realm. Or what we call the eternal realm. In Hebrews chapter 9, the verse 14, the Bible says it very powerfully. Hebrews 9 verse 14. He says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now, do you have the YLT? YLT or ESV? He calls it the age during spirit. Do you have the NLT, YLT, something, something? I just wanted to see if any of them did what I wanted them to do. Okay. Now, don't worry. Now, if you check it in the literal, the reason why you see what you are seeing here is that the eternal spirit is not his name. So if you can see even the English did that for us. The word eternal is not caps. It is this that's caps. Let's find another scripture in um, John 7 verse 37. Let's see. Let's see so we can go on saying. Right, verse 38, 38, next verse, 39. This speak ye of what? No. I have the spirit, which what? For, for the, no, notice he didn't use small h. So every time you see Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, the h is not small. It's not lower caps. That means the holy is part of his name. It's part of his name. But when you come to Hebrews chapter, 
forgive me for doing a lot of interpretation like this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. He uses eternal as an adjective. That means it's a function. The spirit is the noun. So eternal spirit is not his name. The spirit is the noun. Actually, in the text of the Greek, it's actually the spirit, the eternal. That means the eternal is the spirit. The realm of the eternities is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the eternal spirit. Let's go to Psalm 139, verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or where shall I flee from thy presence? Next. I shall ascend to heaven, thou art there. Now he's giving the scope of heaven, the scope of the spiritual realm. If I make my bed in hell, so the Holy Ghost is also in hell. Let's go to verse 7. I know when you listen to these things with religious spirit, you will not hear what I'm saying. Whither shall I <laughs> whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? Next. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. How do I know this? When there was a fight in heaven, when the angels decided to revolt against God, and decided to carry all Lucifer, one third of the angels on his side, to fight God. Notice something. God was watching it. God didn't stop it. Now this explanation should bring you the understanding. God watched it. God didn't stop it. The only reason why God watched it and did not stop it was because the Bible says Satan was wiser than Daniel. According to Ezekiel chapter 38, thou art wiser than Daniel. And thou sealest the sum of all wisdom. What Satan had is wisdom. He understands a lot of things. See what he says. But thou art wiser than Daniel. And there's no secret they can hide from thee. Next. Hmm. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches. He was speaking about Satan here. And he was likening him to the king of Tyre. Now, when you get to the verse number 12, he said, thou sealest the sum. Uh -huh. He was perfect in beauty, full of wisdom. He sealed the psalm, full of wisdom. So what Satan was using to deal with God was, it was based on information. He knew, number one, when God made them, in their dealings with God, everything God said and did was connected to his will. Anything that was not consistent to the will of God, you will not get God to act. So Satan knew that if he gets God to act contrary to his will, he has lost his godhood. It's the reason why he kept setting traps for God. So that God will move by emotion rather than purpose. If God moves by emotion, he has lost his throne. Satan can say, you are not fit to be God. Do you understand why Satan can accuse you before God? It's on the basis of legalities. It's on the basis of what he knows. He knows something you are not aware of. And that's what Satan does. So Satan knew that because of free will. Now this was Satan. You see the one you watch these prison break movies. You can see that the guy will go and check the cameras and see the blind side of the guard and know how to escape. Satan knew God's blind side. And God's blind side is his word and the blood. What covers you is the blood. That means beyond the blood, God cannot see anything again. So when Balaam showed up, he had forgotten that God does not see beyond the blood. So Balaam stood upon the mountain Pisgah. This is Numbers 22, 23. And it's just after Numbers 21 when snakes have bitten them. Yeah. Yet when the prophet stood, he says, I have not beheld iniquity. It's not I have not known. I have not seen. It means there is an altar that has covered their sins. And because of the blood that is being offered, I cannot see their sins. Yeah. Do you know the shocking thing? And, and Balaam was instrumental in understanding the dealings of the supernatural. He said, do you know something? If we deal with them on the grace and mercy and law, we will lose the battle. So do you know what I can suggest to you? Numbers 25. Get the girls. Let them seduce the men. And let them sleep with them. It will lower their spiritual energy. Then we can curse them. So can I tell you something? Oh, my God. 
I told you I have legalities part three for you. One of the highest is, one day I asked God, I said, why does Satan use sex? He said, it is what lowers your state for the penetration of curses. Don't joke. No sex is free. Somebody is paying. No sex is free. Somebody is paying. Hey, tell me. 14 February. If the person will not carry you to altar, may he not carry you to bed. No, sex is, sex, is, sex is not love. Girls, girls, I'll meet you. Make sure you don't let any goat <laughs> deceive you that meet me here and I'll, hey, hey, hey. show up. Because can I tell you something? Was about many years ago, there was a lady I sent a text, be at this all night. She didn't come. She didn't come all night. I told her, she come with your blood. They didn't come. Do you know that night when she slept, she saw that a python was tying her and he said, the beloved also had the same dream. That's why you know that it's dangerous. The same dream, the same night. I said, you see, there are some things you miss out when we say show up and you don't show up. Something will find you. What am I trying to tell you? If you are not married, you don't have anything planned for your Valentine's Day. Why are you missing 14th? You say you won't come. You will be in there. Somebody will text you. You day house. You are in your room. I'm passing by. And that's the beginning of... You know the painful part? God forbid, you will finish what you are doing. Would you when you see the message and say, hey, everything that happened is in the message. <laughs> Satan, let, Satan has let Cleopatra fall. He let Julius Caesar fall. Your great grandfather was very wild. In the days where they didn't have internet, he fell. Is it you? With all these internet things you are watching. In the days where they used to wear boo-boo, men fell. Is it you? Do you know what it took for Judah to go and find a prostitute? Whose face was covered? Because it means that, sir, she had covered head to toe, but the man was still saying, I like this one. How? She was not standing home. She hmm. there's a spirit man. Eh? <laughs> when the feelings hold you, You'll be shocked. Be shocked. Yes, you are. Like, because if you saw her face, you know, ah, that's my daughter in law. That means the lady covered everything. Yet Judah said, This is the taste. This is the one. <laughs> this is the one that today I'll sleep with. Yeah. So if Satan knows what to make Jacob for, he knows how to plant it in Reuben's loins. Do you know what Reuben did to his father? He slept with his father's girlfriend. He said, you climbed my bed. Hmm. <laughs> Listen to something. <laughs> hey, be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what happened was that there was a man called David. He did not handle the fire in his loins. And the reason was because he says, in sin was I conceived. That means even his father went to do away much. And David came about. Then he forgot that there was a sin that he had to deal with. Do you know the shocking thing? He didn't just give it to Solomon. The Bible said Absalom was one of the most handsome men. If I was called so beautiful, his hair. Do you know what he did? He didn't even marry young girls. So his father's girls. The Bible said he carried them to the rooftop. Oh my God. That's what Absalom did. No, Absalom, it should tell you, it should, say, it should tell you the level, the level of de decadence that was moving in this bloodstream. So don't think you are smarter than the devil. Be ignorant of scripture and avoiding protocols that will preserve you from falling. You are not smart. He knows how your ancestors fell. You are not the first. Yeah. And you see, it's the same root. In fact, if there's any place to preach patterns of the blood, it is in this line. The road that made your father fall, it is the same road he will take you on. Same. It's not anything different. 
That's how patterns are repeated. Because he knows how your father failed. The girl he failed with. I told the story of a certain man who said his father was a polygamist. So he would never be a polygamist. And he was using his own efforts. And he said, okay, we'll see. He kept himself. Age 54. He said he has no child. So sometimes barrenness is a product of Satan putting you in a corner. To me. I know a story of a pastor. He, they had not given birth for about 20 years. And he was getting frustrated. Then one day a member tempted him. And he said, yeah, he just said, pastor, I know you want a son. I can, I can give him and I will swear and I will not be, yeah, I'll just, yeah. Hey. Man of God. The woman got pregnant. And he was happy, silent. You can, you can you touch it. You can't call it testimony. <laughs> How will you call it a miracle? Because <laughs> that's why I told the last time in that, that teaching that sometimes not the miracle you hold. Though. How you got it is what qualifies it as miracle or not miracle. So he said, as soon as he got home, two days later, the wife came, shouting happy. He said, why are you happy like that? He said, I'm pregnant. The man couldn't be happy. You know why? Because he knew what, he knew Satan had set him up. Satan put pressure to fight his children from showing up so that he would fall. And the day he fell, not knowing the wife could get pregnant. The wife too was pregnant. Here he is. Side chick is pregnant. Wife is pregnant. Hey, what shall happen on the day of Adonai? How would the outdooring be? You are happy, but you can't be happy. Because you know, beside your Isaac, Ishmael is waiting. And usually those Ishmaels, <laughs> they came with a sword. You know what happened? Satan could not destroy the lineage of priesthood till your indiscretion brought a bastard. I'm not saying another child is a bastard. Though. I'm using words in a certain way. It means that was not the plan of God. And this boy showed up. Ha! Huh? He will bring terror to the house. Because some of us don't understand that this life you are living, because it's from the spiritual realm, your ignorance does not make you realize you are programmed. Can I tell you something? Some of you, if you only went to find out the root of your birth and the circumstances concerning your living, you'll be told that your life, eh, you'll be great. But they will make you like men. And you can't help yourself. It's part of the programming to destroy your glory. Yeah. Some of you, they, were, they pronounce, you'll be beautiful, but men will use you. You will never be happy. And they were pronouncements. You didn't hear it. Yeah. You didn't hear it. Some of us, when we were born, we got prophecies. My mom told me. I also heard it from people. In fact, in Sunday school, one prophetess told me, he says, God do use you, but be careful of women. That was the day I was very careful how I deal with women. Because I knew if I lose Jack, man of God. Uh, <laughs> 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 my God, my God. So even up to now, there are consecrations you have to live to make sure that that prophecy, there is no junction where opportunity presents itself. So some of the things, a lot of guys around you, a lot, some of it is programming. It's programming to limit the effect of glory, of lifting, of how the whole world will hear your name. It's programming to silence your glory. You don't joke with these things. Don't joke with it. Because can I show you something? Yeah. The very thing that is the, a, 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 when you go to the shrine, they call it Shebre Echiwadie. Yes. So in other words, there are some things that they call in the local dialect that it is your destiny's uh, allergy. <laughs> <laughs> your destiny has allergy. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Amen. It means there are some things in your life. Eh? Oh. You let me just preach. Listen. Can I show you something? Yes, yes. Yeah. So some, some people, eh, they program the thing in such a way that this thing must happen ten times. Mm -hmm. After the tenth time, it's not that God cannot redeem them. They will be so lost in the maze of the spiritual quagmire, nothing can bring them back on track. 
Even if they try, it will be a six months reparation. It means every six months you fall again. Every six months you fall again. And some of you don't even realize the cycle. Anybody who has dealt with the spirit of masturbation or pornography, there are cycles. Either beginning of the month or end of the month, you masturbate. You don't know it's a sacrifice to an altar. Feelings, Hannah, yo, man, feelings, feelings. We are sacrificing to a date. Hmm. This year, oh my God. That is why you get to a point in your life. You realize that when certain things, you've not watched porn, you've not masturbated, you've not slept with a lady, things are working. Then all of a sudden, Satan realizes you, you, you are getting on track. First thing you start is programming. To do, you are praying too much. Relax. That's the first one. Second one is silent, subtle disobedience. It's not every day you have to do dry. I mean, look at your stomach. It's aching. Just, just, have you noticed those days? You, when we were all doing dry, you were eating. All of a sudden, you started watching things. So you go like, in the fast, you are watching porn. What? It, because Satan could not get you till he caused you to violate instruction. I expose it. Me expose it. I'm exposing. How's that, your marshal? So some of the sugar that is, they are programmed. That is why they never show up until you are broke. And everything they will suggest is everything you need. If you are not spiritual. And they will use words like, listen, I will help you. One of my daughters came to say, Daddy, one lecturer was telling me, he said, I'll help you. He said, I'm, I'm old. I won't do much. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, it's old. You won't do much. Perhaps once a month. <laughs> so, you see, they'll even present that thing like, it's not a big deal. Just once a month. That's once a while. Be. It's not in a oh, one pair. 30 days, one. I no, won't do everything. Man, you understand? So, they program you at the time of your life. <laughs> you are laughing. We hear things so all kinds of things. To bring you money as a woman, collect money, and it's nice. Buy this phone for you, it's nice. And little by little, every change you take is changing your conviction. Now you are enduring the smoke, the whiskey, a little bit of it, a little bit of the music, because every time there's money coming into your hand. So it's not bad like that. I'm able to solve something. But you know what you're doing? Who for a morsel of bread? You are selling your birthright. It's called Bebalos. You don't know the weight of the glory you carry. Do you know what that means? Somebody's giving you a thousand Ghana every week. When God says, I have arranged that you would have worked in $100,000, Per week. If you look at the dimensions of the uh, the demon of what God had prepared, then you will know that this thousand Ghana you sacrificed, you hurt yourself, you injured yourself. You see, when we are young, we don't know where we are going. There's a realm you get to. You want to be president of Ghana. When you want to be, listen, listen, listen. When you want to be president of Ghana. The association of occult, they investigate you. Anytime you want to assume power from office to state, the people that we call the powers that be, they, have, they investigate you. That's what they did to Daniel. They investigated Daniel and found no occasion. He didn't go to prostitutes. He was not rainbow. He was nothing. He was straight God. So they said, we can't get anything wrong with this guy. He doesn't like alcohol. He doesn't like girls. He doesn't like boys. He doesn't like anybody. So let us find occasion. And say, you know something? He, the only thing he does is pray. He said, but how can we use prayer to imprison him? Ah, he prays to the God of Israel. So let's confuse the king and pamper him to make a law that nobody should pray to another God except him. And we know he likes Daniel. So let's say it in a way his mind will not come on it. So instead of reporting Daniel's prayer life to Darius, they didn't report his prayer life. They rather went to twist the law. So by the time Daniel fell into the trap, Darius was like, oh my God, 
By my own hand, I have caused my best friend to enter this trap. But the same thing that they set as a trap to imprison him, they did not know was the very thing that had produced the energy to suspend the attack. It's the same thing they said is the reason they were imprisoning him. It's the very thing that had given him immunity against the lions. It's the same thing that has set them up to die. That means a man who consistently sustains his altar life, when you set any ambushment against him, you will eat your own flesh. So that statement, don't say it when you are living anyhow. You say it when you are consistently sustaining the protocols of the altar. So when they come against you, they will rather fall. This is one of the things you have to pray. One of, so one of the, you have to just go on a fast this year and tell the Lord, detox me. Detox me from any childhood abuse. Detox me from my first encounter with sexual material. Detox me from all these things I've been doing for some time now. Detox me. Because some of you have told you, I told you some time ago, man of God, somebody has slept with guy A, he has slept with guy B, he has slept with guy D, and they don't know that every one of them carries a DNA of you. You know somebody can have sex with a guy and all of us start having the person's body order. Yes. The two of them start smelling the same way because of because you don't understand that the goal of love is the same image. That's when you, you hang around somebody for a long time, it's as if they begin to confuse whether you're brother and sister. That's what intimacy can do. People start confusing whether you are siblings or you are. We don't you, you look too alike. It's called image, the image of the bonded one. So what happens is that this girl is sleeping. She has asked God for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. But the girl has not realized that the boy she used to sleep with is still sleeping with other girls. And according to even residual DNA, part of you is still in the guy. Yes, it's DNA. Part of you is still in the guy. So all of a sudden, you realize that, ah, you are praying. You are being spiritual one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months. Then all of a sudden, you are working on, hey, <laughs> Where is this feeling coming from? Well, like, hey. ah. then you, and this is why you know something is connected. But I'm not watching anything bad. But I'm not thinking negative. But I'm not meditating on anything. What? Somebody you have connected with is sleeping with another person. So in the spirit, you plus the person are sleeping with that person. Hey, 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 listen. Listen, hey, hey, listen. I've dealt with occults. One of the fluids. Have you seen when men want to do juju? They use their menstrual blood. Not the cat blood. Not the one they cut from your hand. They take the menstruation blood. Ask yourself why. If the man wants blood, don't you sleep and you just use needle and collect your blood. Why is it the menstruation blood? Because of where it's coming from. It's the same way when a woman wants to do something to a man. You will take your semen. Mm. <laughs> a certain boy. Yeah, he realized it. A lady invited him to come over. I've told you that story before. Yeah. I say, hey, what free bonto is this? He said, ah, well, I've been invited. So I'll just do what I'll do. He did, 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 did everything. And the women were like, have you this? And he said, no. He said, hey, women, they caught him. He didn't know. So he realized that thing is becoming demonic. You could sense an energy. That the girl who was sleeping with him is not his level. But the person was ready to sleep with him. He knew something was up. And the person kept asking, have you ejaculated? He said, no, I haven't. So he realized that he has to do a trick. As soon as he ejaculated, he pretended like nothing has happened. Then he said, when he, it happened, the lady realized it. He said, he ran to the washroom. The lady chased him. He said, immediately, he swallowed it. Because <laughs> he knows that if this girl holds this thing. <laughs> you see? <laughs> He swallowed it. He knows that if it's glucose, <laughs> if it goes to the underworld, my God, my God. <laughs> no, you are joking with a lot of things. That's why sometimes eh, resisting temptation is wisdom. Because repairing the fall, repairing the fall in the temptation 
It's, it's, it's a heavy price. It's a heavy price. Sometimes you don't even know where to start from. Can I shock you somewhere? Revelation 12, 12, I will show you the kingdom Satan came to assess when he descended. Revelation 12, 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, because he has been cast. You see, he said ye heavens. And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the... So who are those that dwell in heaven? Another story. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. That means that Satan, when he was cast down, came to inhabit the earth and the sea. Look, if you're a woman, you're a man. From time to time, yes, you see something, you feel attracted to the thing. But that uncontrollable, like, it's like a fix. If you don't do something about your arousal, it's a demon. It's moving you to irrevocable danger. Irrevo um, when I say I mean, it, 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 it's, there's a wound that's very deep. If you don't deal with it. <laughs> Somebody say, I, I said it to I said it to this girl, the way she was around me. I said it, yes, man. <laughs> Someone is beginning to remember that. I said, I said it, this girl's not going to come around me. I knew, I knew it. I knew that it's not that I'm handsome. Something is, something is up. They have programmed me. Something is, it's not my beauty. It's not my, something is up. I, I knew it. So I'm talking about your heart is doing she. Hey, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I tell you that knowledge is so powerful. Knowledge is so powerful. So powerful. So powerful. You know what the Bible says? <laughs> In Proverbs 31, it said, don't waste your strength on a woman. When you sleep with your wife, it's not wasting strength. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you are married. <laughs> May you marry too, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, don't miss the girls' girls' meeting. Now, we are designing such a way that we'll have enough time for you. Any question you want to ask, ask it. Okay. Um, Mommy will share with you. Then I'll, it's, please, it's not live. Please get me. It's not live. If you are not registered, if, you're not, if you are not coming, you have to ask for the registered link. It's not live. It's not a service we, share, we are sharing for people. Because we want to address people's real questions. So we are not going to put live and people will be like, because you are live, you don't know how to ask the question. Come without the boy, and come and ask the question. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So we'll give platform for you to project the question and ask it, and we'll be able to answer it well for you. The boys' boys too is on Saturday, 17th. We'll address all of that. Some of the things you have to do as a man. Some of the things you have to learn as a man. Some of the things you have to develop as a man right now so that you can have the upper hand in life. Amen. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? So the realm of the spirit is very vast. Very, very vast. Very, very vast. And what happened was that when God created it, now, because of the laws of the spirit, there are laws that govern the spirit. And one of the laws of the spirit is free will is a power. Free will is power. So when even Satan was trying to make or plan a coup d'etat, because it was in the division and the place of free will, God could not stop him. That means that if Satan even had a plan to revolt against God, and God wanted of the angels to revolt against God, and they never revolted against God, God would still inhabit with them in heaven. 
That's how free will is powerful. That means you can be in God's presence and be planning a coup d'etat and God will not even stop you. The only time you'll be stopped is when you are coming against his assignment. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the reason why Adam had a decision to want to be like God without God. And God knew it and God was watching him. Because of free will. God could not stop it. That's why you can, Reverend Ken Higgins said it, that he was praying one day and a demon was disturbing him. Who has ever been in the presence of God as you were praying, you started remembering things of your flesh. You were starting to feel all kinds of feelings. Yes. Somebody gave me a story that said that he was reading the Bible, was still having an erection. Yes. He didn't understand why the erection was not going. He had spoken in tongues, he had taken communion, zabo, rabba, zabo, rabba. <laughs> that thing was still there. He just didn't know what was happening. In the presence of God. Can you imagine the presence of angels? You have an erection. Hey! My brother, where is your mind? What kind of human being are you? The Lord is there, my son, and you still have an erection. He said, everything he has, he said, is not working. Why? Because in that realm, we sometimes think that because we are in God's presence, we should think the right things. Recently, I was talking to some pastors some time ago. I was telling them, man of God, some of my pastors, early years, one of them came to confess to me that when he goes to retreat, he goes to watch pornography. <laughs> At retreat, he's watching Pornhub. What is it's retreat? Oh, but you see, you are supposed to meet the Lord there. But you see, free will. Free will. Hey, you are there. Hey, hey. Some of you go for a retreat, you go and watch Instagram. Some of you go for a retreat, you go and watch football match. Yeah. Whilst you are on retreat, yeah. you are checking the news of who scored. I remember many years ago, I went to a certain mountain and I was praying there. And on top of the mountain, Ghana was playing, uh, 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 I think it was come 2008. <laughs> The people on the mountain who were supposed to be praying were watching the match. Huh? <laughs> 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 they were watching the match. <laughs> I thought we understand it. On top of the mountain, they were watching a football match. So the fact that the place is the place of God, the fact that the place is a place where you encounter God, because of free will, because of free will, you can still show up. And you will still act like it was your bedroom. And that's why I said to you that. Not that Jesus is not powerful. But because of what he himself has said. That he will never intrude your will. Until there is collaboration. He can tell you I will meet you. And when he came. You were watching a movie. Jesus cannot force the TV to go off. Jesus will not cause a light out. Then that one. You are coming to have fellowship with him. And the duress. You didn't really want to do it because the lights went off. That's why he will not stop it. He will watch you. That's why I said to you that. So Reverend Higgins said he was in a prayer time. Demons were making noise. And he told Jesus that, can't you stop the demons? He says, I can't. He said, ah, what do you mean I can't? He says, I can't. He said, you won't or you can't? He said, I can't. He said, why? He said, because according to the law of the kingdom, I have given all power to the church. So when I even come and stand by your side, if you don't, he said, whatsoever you bind, then what has been bound is made available as bindable. So if you don't bind it, it means you allow it. He said, whatsoever ye allow, even if God does not want to allow it, God cannot stop the allowance. So if God comes to you in a dream and says, this your aunt, suffer not a witch to live, she must die. And so Lord, let her live. God will say, okay. <laughs> God will say, okay, since you want her to live, then let her live. There's nothing I can do about it. God will just watch you. Why? 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 Whatsoever ye desire. God cannot give you what you don't desire. You must desire. That's why if you want to have an encounter, you must prepare yourself from the house that God, this prayer I'm going, I'm going to have an encounter. Help me to know how to encounter you. Then God will tell you, these are the three things to do. Phone off. TV off, this off. When you go at this time, do A, B, C, D. I'm telling you, you will be shocked how swift you can enter the spirit. So I'm saying this to bring your mind to this. The moment Lucifer fell, he was not disbanded from the realm of the spirit. He's a falling spirit. He's a what? Falling spirit. His operation is in the realm of the spirit. But he is as a substructure in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, let's go there, in Genesis 1 verse 8, let's look at the locations of the substructure of the realm of the spirit. Now he says, and God called the feminine heaven. 
and evening and morning and the second day. Now, if you notice what he says, he had already created heaven and earth. It was the earth in verse 2 that was without form and void. So this firmament he's calling heaven. It's not the heaven in heaven. Chapter 2, verse 4. Chapter 2, verse 4. Hey. Chapter 2, verse 4. Holy Spirit. YLT. See what he's saying here. And that's why you understand what I'm trying to say. YLT. And these are the births of the heavens and of the earth. Not singular. Heaven. Births. The birthings. <coughs> in the day of Jehovah's God's of Jehovah God's making earth and heavens. Now, the moment he said earth and heavens means that Genesis 1 says, God made the heaven and the earth. The earth was what was void and without form. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God was repairing the earth. But the earth's heavens is what he's talking about as the feminine. And that's what I just showed you as the sky. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Verse 14. See what he says. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens. So you see, they are different things. The heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. And the earth also with all that there. So, and when, let's go to First Kings, chapter 8, verse 27. Let's read together. I want to go. So there's something called the heaven. And the heaven of heavens. Isaiah 34. Verse 4. Let's read together. I want to go. Hallelujah. He says that, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Every time you see heaven with S, it speaks directly to the sky. So it is the sky that will be rolled like a scroll. But the host of heaven that shall be dissolved, the word host is speaking of the stars. Is speaking of the stars. It's speaking of the stars, the outer space, the constellations. So you see here, it separates it. So now let's go back to Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 14, and let's see what he said. So he says, and the heaven... And the heaven of heavens. Are you seeing what's happening? Are you, are you sure? He says, and the heaven. And the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. So he's speaking of one, the constellations. And that's what Genesis chapter 1 verse 8 was talking about. When he was speaking about the feminine. The feminine you are talking about is not the sky. The feminine is not the sky. Please don't be deceived. The feminine is not what? The sky. It isn't the sky. The feminine is not the sky. It's beyond the sky. In fact, the Latin is feminentum. It's a firm ground. You can stand on it. If it was the sky, then we would see them. It's not the sky. No. It's not, please, it's not the sky. Let's stop that one. It's not the sky. It's beyond the sky he's talking about. Beyond the sky. That feminine he's talking about is beyond the sky. It's beyond the sky. Now, this sky or this feminine, when you get to the scriptures, where he now speaks about um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we have spiritual wickedness in heavenly 
or you have ASV, the high places. ASV amplified. See what it says. We have spiritual wickedness against the spiritual host of heavenly of wickedness in the heavenly places. It's in the heavenly places. And this is where she spoke about the heaven of the heavens. Please are you here? Yeah. He spoke about the heaven of the heavens. So the firmament is a location that acts sometimes like the heavens of the heavens. I'm explaining this to you to explain. So the first one, the Bible says, which is the sky. The second one is the firmament and the heaven of the heavens, which speaks of the entrance to where God is. Please, are you here? Are you sure? And where the spirits are, it's not our biosphere. They are in the heavenly places, which is the firmament, beyond our sky. That's why people go into space and see all kinds of creatures. It's in that realm. It's beyond, it's called firmament. It's, it's hard ground. It's not cloud. They can, that's why planets, they are all part of the thing. Hey. no Because every time we say feminine, we are thinking of clouds. So that's no, that's not it. That's not what you are talking about. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Of course, there are certain generic words that are used. So sometimes I understand the confusion. But I'm trying to bring your mind to it. So it's three levels. This is why Paul said he was caught up into the third heaven. The first heaven is the sky. The second heaven is the feminine. The third heaven is the entrance to where God is. The heavenly city. But even with that, I'll show you something. The moment you get created, you have a spirit. But your spirit, until you are born again, is a two. It's not a person. It's a two. It's not a person. It's a two. It's an organ. It's not a person. That's why I said, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. First John 5, 4. Whatsoever... But when that what has become a person in the spirit, the inner man. So 1 John 5 verse 4 says what? Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So he says the what is the spirit as an organ. But when the what is born, it now becomes whosoever is born of God does not sin. So the who now gives you the action of living. But the what is the potential given. Hmm. He didn't say what so. So if it's, <laughs> please forgive me, okay? Today we are being more theological, but follow. For whatsoever is born of God will overcome the world. Or overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it's a whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, has already taken the lead in terms of the creation status. The world is behind such a person who has been giving life in his spirit. Your spirit is now an inner man. But when you are not born again, your spirit is not an inner man. It's an inner it. It's something. It's an, it's an organ you have. It's not a person yet. I even know what I'm saying. So, I'm going to show you something very interesting. The moment I get born again, the Holy Ghost takes my human spirit in its recreated form and navigates it past the realm of human spirit. Do you know that even without being born again, your spirit has some abilities? One of it is conscience. One of the abilities of every human being is conscience. Now, there's also something that is also a little bit adjunct from conscience, which has to do with premonition. You call it deja vu. So when you're not born again, you dream a dream. It's like it's repeating itself, or it has happened before, or you were somewhere before. So some people explain it as predestination, or you have been reborn. You were once a tree, and you were in India. So now that you were born again, you have come to Ghana as a human being. You know, that's what the, Hind the Hinduist teachings say. So you were once a tree or a mountain. That's why sometimes you can dream a certain dream and you are in a certain location all the time. That's an improper explanation of the travels of the spirit man. 
I can tell you 10 places my spirit went to before I ever showed up at that location. 10. I can mention the places. One is at Osu. I went there in the spirit before I was asked to come and preach there. When I was driving there, I said, I've seen this place before. It was exactly what I saw in my dream. I, I can tell you those places. When your spirit man is trained, you don't experience deja vu again. Because you can harness information and you know how to use it. It's like this has happened before. It, your spirit, it means your spirit man needs to be innovated. That's why it's like this thing has happened before. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You don't know, you must know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are you here? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. This, this message, I, that, I knew it to be like that. So I'm speaking very soft, very gentle, very cool. So you can understand it. Someone say, hey, Prophet, but it doesn't change what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Go and digest it to help you. At least I'm, we have given you some messages to go and listen to. So what happens now is that the moment you get born again, the Holy Ghost now enters your spirit. And when the moment the Holy Ghost enters your spirit and becomes one with your spirit, the goal of the Holy Ghost is not the realm of your human spirit. It's beyond that. It's not even the realm of angels. You see, people get stuck in realm of angels is where we have visions and you see demons, they see you, all those kind of things. That's the realm of angels. But there's a realm beyond that called the realm of God. And the realm of God, those spirits cannot come there because no angel has seen God at any point in time. Are you understanding? So there's a, many of us get stuck at the angelic realm. We see angels, we see mountains, we see stories in our family. That's why you see descending of spirits, situations in your family, things that are past. That's the realm of angels. It's not yet the realm of God. When you enter the realm of God, it's quiet. When you enter the realm of God, it's absolute. When you enter the realm of God, you come back with authority. So I know in this journey, I'll show you something. Let me even say it here. The reason for our country is something called spiritual bypass. It means you don't have the strength to journey protocols to access the solution you are looking for. So you have to give a sacrifice to somebody who will buy certain things to journey on your behalf. But that journey will require consistent servicing. So you realize that you are giving solution for two years and you have to go and service the altar after two years because somebody did it on your behalf and you brought certain things for it to be done. That's why a prophet will tell you that bring me oil. Bring me seven days. It means that where you are, your spirit is not ready to do the journey. But I will assist you to journey. But that journey is a dangerous one. Because in that journey, I'm not accessing the corridors of God. You know what I'm doing? I'm entering the system of angels. And when I say angels, Satan is a fallen angel. So it, I'm in their realm. So now I have to bypass legal boundaries and speak on matters on the basis of power that is given to the entity in that realm. So when that person tells you, you insulted your father, so you need to come to the altar and kill a goat, I have to come and tell you that until you kill a goat, we can't solve this matter. But when I journey by the Holy Ghost into God, when I show up at that altar, I am not coming by the power that is determined by these spirits. I'm coming by God's authority. Hallelujah. So I can subpoena Hallelujah. my preaching a message. That's why you shouldn't joke with fasting and prayers. Because as long as you keep avoiding spiritual things that will make you strong, you are always going to be subject to somebody's spiritual direction. Pray fast. When your spirit is strong, they can't mess with you. Saktuma, Erebe Kamu Fadijis, Zimbele Kalila Shayo Sama. Are you understanding? Somebody says, So, Prophet, do all these things. Yes, that's why I don't. Yes, so, why don't you do consultation? If I do it, you create a certain, yeah, you create a certain level of Christians. The reason why sometimes when you come to me, I give you the, the longer route is because it's the most enduring route is the route that will even save your children. Because if I give you any shortcut, the thing that you felt fought, your children have to come to the same altar and collect another mantle. Mm. But when we show you that, listen, 
The day you shake your brother's yoke off your net, you will progress. That one, that's why they say this kind. It does not go out by eating and calling your man of God to pray for you. It goes out by you. Not even the one they call us, let's pray at all night. It is you. You take leave just to go and pray. That's the, well, that's the realm used to suspend some things in your life. Otherwise, this prosperity thing you're looking for, it won't happen by mistake. You have, to pu- you have to push on doors. You have to be angry that enough is enough. This thing must end. Huh? Some things must end. It must end. It ends in your day. Do you understand? Yeah. So when you see men who operate in strides in the spirit, the reason why Bishop Boedipo was able to enter the evil forest was number one. He had a clean heart. So when I'm praying and fasting and studying the word and I'm working with Jesus Christ, by the time I meet Satan, he will say, there is nothing in Adam. So I don't succumb to his influence. So I can enter an evil forest and nobody there can touch you. The reason why many Christians today are struggling is because they are still sleeping with the married men. They are still cheating in the office. And that's why all the prophets can do for them is direction. Because your nature is violating authority. So somebody has to be giving you navigations like Balaam and Barak. And Balak. Stand by your bench of friend. Do this. Do that. So that they used to navigate the way they can get you. And as they are also navigating... The prophet will also tell you, ah, I see. No, don't sit by this person. Sit here. No, that, that's where sometimes those directions are. There's a realm you get to in spiritual authority. I will never call you to tell you don't travel. You have enough authority to face any devil on the road. You are driving Z, and they'll call you and tell you that man of God. Even before you even travel, the Lord will come and tell you that. Rise up. Many are dead that are against you, but I'm with you. As you're on your way, your tie, one will fly, wham, and you will just laugh. You know you have met the Prince of Persia, but you are well able to handle it. So you will not. Hey, so some people we have to tell them, don't go. Why? What you are, your carnality, they will eat you like tangerine. So the best is, don't go. You are not in the state where you can fight this battle. But another person, go. And the person is constantly firing. And number two, the person is spiritual. So it gets to a certain part of the journey. They begin to lead voice. Can I tell you sometimes? Some of you, sometimes, when we're going for the, this um, um, what, calf's, calf's wedding, when we're going for, yesterday we went for a funeral, I was in my room and the Lord said, the enemy will rise up in contention against them. I said, Lord, I nullify it. I nullify it. And the Lord said, make sure a pastor is in the bus. That's all. Before they come and tell you that your, your church was on the way to a funeral and they had an accident. <laughs> yes, my wife yesterday. Yeah, I wanted to, you, am I like, I wanted to be in the bus. The reason I wanted to be in the bus was of the vision I saw. God said, go, so that you can secure people. I said, Lord, but you can see what's happening. He said, okay. Now, he said, find the pastor and anoint him. Take over. So you're going, then I release you to go. You, you, the life we are living, you are living it casually. You want to be a manager of a bank and somebody has killed seven goats. Seven goats. And you are here arguing about tight. No, do you know how do you know how you sound? Somebody is killing goats. And you are fighting over tight. We want to the tight is just 300 cities. How much is the cost of one goat? And you are fighting, and this time they want to, you are not ready to trade. In the realms of power. Listen, as we go on it, I didn't I did want to touch up because people like this type of teachings and it's like very mystical. It's not a no, no, no. It's a simple something. If you listen to everything I've told you, I told you that the realm of the spirit, eh, the reason why even the Holy Ghost, remember what scripture said, Genesis 1 verse 2, he was hovering over the waters and over the deep. The word deep is abusos, abyss. So that's one place where evil spirits are. So even the Holy Ghost, oh my God, 
I will teach you on the administration of the Holy Ghost. And one of the things you have to understand is that there is a spirit called the Latin spirit. Do you know that all Satan did against Job was still regulated by God? Ah, brah, sister. If it was not regulated by God, Job, <laughs> Job went off. What did he say? When he came, he said, so have you not blessed him? Have you not this? Job went off. See what he said. He said, you, you, okay, there's a space. Behold. Anytime you say behold, God didn't say, I let you. God didn't say, I give you. He said, behold, all that he has is in thy power. You know why? If you read downwards, you realize that every time his children went to do party, he was afraid they have sinned. But look at even the warning God gave him. But don't touch him. Yet, we see along the line, his body was touched. Who made the door open? Who made that door open? Because you see, when a man loses all he has, he stands out thinking of his existence. Because the Bible says he was now cursing the day he was born. I was out of things. And he says, behold, it's open. But make sure he doesn't die. So we are, because you see, if we were thinking so, Job 9 verse 33, let's go there. This scripture, I always show it to you so you can understand that you, you are reading it the way you read it. That Look what it says. Do you have the YLT or some other translation of some sort? See what it says. If there, was, there were between us an umpire who doth place his hand on us, uh -huh, next, verse 34, he would tell us, he, he, he would have caused God not to carry out all his justice upon him. So Job was trying to say that though I was going through things by God's permission, it was not actually God's permission. It was a, what I just told you. Satan is trying to attack you. And God can't stop him. Because he has come on a basis. And you. Isaiah 54. Are you there? Isaiah 54. Is it verse 17? Let's read it again. Let's read it again. One to go. And every tongue... He did it? Wait, wait, hold, hold, hold. YLT, YLT. It says, And every tongue rising against thee in judgment, thou condemnest. Do you have Amplified Classic? I want you to see something very powerful. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. Not God. You. So if Satan comes against you and says, Hey, I deserve it. God cannot deliver you. Hey, this thing is true because I lied. Uh, look at what I'm going through. That's why I took the last time in legalities. Guilt and condemnation is Satan's poison. You, oh, you immobilize the legal power by which God is able to deliver you. Stop it. Maliko fire. So the moment the Holy Ghost comes, we are the masters of the realm of the spirit. Oh yeah. Every time you sleep and wake up, you are in charge. So when you wake up in the morning, this is what you do when you wake up in the morning. As a master in, realm, in charge of the realm of the spirit, as soon as you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is, as soon as you sit down, ah, Satoraba Shande Debes. Father, what do you have for the day? Mm, then all of a sudden, as we are thinking through the day, you see, without praying, sometimes before you even check your phone, your senses are already alert that today feels like a bad day. That feeling is not even the truth. It is a signal to tell you that they have been cooking whilst you slept. So now that you are awake, there's a choice. As soon as you wake up, you say, mm. How am I feeling how I'm feeling? Look at the dream I also had. And, uh, oh, I don't think today will go well. Oh. The, the owner who is a who, not a what in the spirit, 
has already declared, I don't think the day will go well. Do you think after what you have said, God can stop the day from going well, from going bad? Because in the spirit, as soon as you say, I don't think the day is going well, when you woke up, the demons who were cooking were waiting. Hey. Have you noticed that before? Sometimes when you are entering a house and everybody is asleep, you do this. When you are opening the door, you press it like a thief. Then sometimes when, when you are a master of it, do you know what you do? I'll show you a trick today. Blow air. So that the door will move by itself. That one, you see, you will hear the sound of the squeaking. When you have a squeaking door to you, hold the handle and lift it. That's not a person that... That's how the demons are. As soon as you wake up, the demons were cooking. Because while you slept, they were preparing your evil. And then you woke up. Then one demon said, phone, 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 phone. Then the first thing went was your phone. Then you started going on YouTube. And the demon said, he's lost focus. Finish it. Then they will hatch all the eggs. And you are on your phone for three hours. Then you now wake up in the morning. Hey, Jesus, I couldn't pray. Do you know what has happened? There was no prayer to counter the eggs that had been hatched, that had been laid. That means that you will go to work in a hurry. And every egg that had been laid is just going to be hatching in the day. Today's this bad thing has happened. They'll call your mother as mirage. And you're like, hey, what happened today? Then you begin to remember you didn't pray to destroy what had been laid for the day. Your greatest enemy is distraction. You are too distracted this generation. Yet you have the greatest power. But when a man is not distracted and he practices the things he's taught, when they wake up, Rabababa Zunderia Mandala Yandran Zonder Belebega. Venereme Sender. All of a sudden, all the dreams you had, they'll begin to roll out in your spirit. You can remember everything. Mandoromo. And as you are doing this, Mandoromo Zondoromo Zomo. You will see one of the faces of your cousin in the dream. And the Holy Ghost will tell you that's not your cousin. It's somebody in your office. They have a similar name. And you're like, wow, yes. My cousin is Kuju. Oh, that guy in my office. Oh, wow. He doesn't like me. Then you are getting the information for the day. Then as you are speaking in tongues, the Lord begins to amplify the plan of the evil one whilst you slept. And in the bathroom you say, I cancel it. I nullify it. shall not work. Do you know what has happened? As you were doing that, the demons, when they heard you doing Zanderema, they say, oh. And they were looking at you. Zondoromo, Zondoromo. Hmm. Zondoromo, Zondoromo, Zondoromo. And the demons, because whilst you were doing Zondoromo, Zondoromo, they realized that the word of the Lord was equipping your spirit. Very soon, the angels are going to excel in strength because you are come to voice the word of God. So the angels are also smiling. And the demons can see the angels smiling that you will see something. We are, yes, I'm telling you. That's how what, I, I have a series to do on podcast. I told you, spiritual warfare. I will show you how the picture looks like. The reason why you can be the best agent of God, the best anointed man of God, and there are certain days you become Satan's food. There are certain days. You don't even understand why Satan is having a few days when you are very powerful because of this simple principle. And when you wake up in the name of Jesus, this is why Smith Tugusweth had 100% record in his faith life. He said Smith does not feel Smith. Smith tells Smith to feel what he has to feel. So when he stands up, you will feel good. You will be happy today. You will take your mind off every problem in your life. And that is final. So as soon as you wake up in the day, I own the day. Nothing evil is coming my way today. My ears only hear good report. Do you know what you have done? You have emboldened your angels. Your angels begin to walk like this. No, dem no demon has legal right. No spirit comes to you until you call it. I repeat, if it was not so, Oh, I didn't get there. But if it was not so, then you have spirits you never wanted in your life. That's why you have certain spirits other people don't have. Because they are the spirits you are attracted to. Why did he say you are tempted according to desire? It means it's even desire that brings your problems. You bring what you are going through for yourself. You're a young lady. And it's true, your passion, this generation, you don't have control over a lot of things. The pictures you see. So literally when you wake up, you are programmed to last. You are programmed to 
last, 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 women, girls, boys, women, girls, but that's how your mind is programmed. When you wake up, you have to declare, I, 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 I separate myself from this thinking. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And as soon as you think like that, all the, all that's all, the demons will just back off. You say, these guys, they can't tempt him. Don't waste your time. It's a word that way. It's a word that way. I said it to you last week. It's a word of faith. It's in your mouth. You are just not saying it. You're rather saying the wrong things. Prophets, my life, I don't know. My life. Hey, hey, by this time of your life, this is not how to talk. You have become everything you said. I cannot fail. I refuse to be tempted. No, if you don't talk like I'm telling you, every temptation is your, the next level for irrecoverable. You can't come out of it, but you have to speak it into me. Because the realm of the spirit is for the lords of God. And these lords know how to use their mouth. They know how to talk. I cannot be sick. And they understand what they are dealing with. That when we say certain things, demons. I told you about the crows in my area. You know. And they are, recently I saw that they are there. One day I was going back to it. God said, they are dummies. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, oh, they, you finish them. But they are just showing up because they are trying to make your mind think when you declare it didn't work. So when they went to stand by, they just then. And when I stood watching them, I saw one of the crow's face come to me. And I saw the face. And when I saw the face, I heard what he was saying to his partner. He said, oh, we beg. Every day you see us, you are sending us this thing. We beg. You know, 31st, after church, I was waiting for them. Because <laughs> of the people in my house, I bought knockouts. <laughs> if I've declared, you say you won't depart that pool. <laughs> <Pa. laughs> you, you, you are too afraid of Satan. And that's the strength over you. You know what God told me at the all night? He said, anytime you are afraid, know you are distant. Let me tell you today. Anytime you are afraid, know you have become distant from God. Don't, don't argue. Anytime you are afraid, you have become distant. You are afraid of life. You are afraid of your body. You are afraid of living. You are afraid of waking up. You are afraid of doing well. You are afraid of prospering. You are afraid of passing. You are afraid of tomorrow. It, it means you have become distant from God. Because the righteous are as bold as a lion. The realm of the spirit is given to us to exact everything God wants to see in our lives. And today I bring you part one of this message. Yes. <laughs> it's very complex. But I told you the truth. And I'm telling you today that that's why there are junctions in the spirit. I didn't get there, but there are many junctions. Jude 1.6, he said, those that did not keep their natural estate has he condemned to what? To darkness. You know the word darkness? Do you know where darkness? The root word of it is nephos, which is also clouds. So the cloud here is the same word that was used in Joel 1, a day of darkness and of thick clouds. So the word darkness is not, it's a dark cloud. It's not even underground. So there are a group of angels. Even the heavenly places they occupy is prison. Yeah, it's prison. Hades in the bottomless pit, abyss. Different categories of locations where they are locked up. But you see, all Satan has been left with in the resurrection is deception. Satan is not powerful like that, though. He's just deceiving you with your fears. You are feeding his strength. Stop feeding Satan's strength. Who said you can't marry? You will marry. Who said you can't have children? You will have children. You know, some of you, Satan has deceived you to think you can never give a thousand dollars. Who told you? You can give it. You can give a thousand pounds. You can. Do you know the shocking part? It's not even a whole year. In a month, you will get a thousand dollars to give. Do you know what I mean? It's just a month away. One thousand dollars will be in your like this, sham, 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 and you give it. And you'll be surprised how it works. Because it's not far from you. But spirits begin to communicate to you. I'm telling you today, oh, some of the thoughts you have, if I have half of them, are not you. It is the speakings of spirits. Can I show you something today? I've gone ahead, but I'll say it. The Holy Ghost works from inside you. The devil works from outside you. 
That's why the best place Satan can get a believer to be compromised is, is his thoughts. And the thoughts can never come alive without information from an external source. Should I say what I said again? The Holy Ghost speaks from within you, works from within you. But the devil works from outside you. That's why he will let you watch a medical story. He will let you watch um, TV3 obituary. And from those, he will let you go for a funeral. And as you are watching the person being put in the casket and you can see the body, something will start talking to you. It can be you. Very soon it will be you. Why? It needs external information to communicate to your head. But the Holy Ghost in your room. That's why, can I tell you something? The fastest way to hear God is to avoid anything that is not consistent with the word of God. That means if I want to hear God in the morning I wake up, phone must be off. Tablet must be off. TV must be off. Only Bible open. What have I done? Because Satan cannot work from inside me. He has been denied instruments by which he can talk to me. But the moment you take your phone first in the morning, you go to Joy News, you go to Yang, you go to me, you go to Wong, all kinds of things. And by the time you realize your mind is clouded with bad news, you can't even pray. What did Satan do? He didn't work from inside you. He worked from outside you. Listen, this year, I will show you how to consistently decipher the voice of God. I will show how to starve Satan's voice from your life. Why is it that you didn't think the thoughts you had till you went to have a meeting with your friends and they started saying certain things? External. That's how Satan talks. External. External voices. When you shut them down, Satan can't talk. That's why retreats are powerful. Because you don't have your phone with you. You don't have friends with you. You are all alone with God. So you begin to hear God better. If he talks from inside you, then even in retreats, you'll be talking through you. Yeah. But you don't know why he's still talking through you. Because you still have devices that he's using to communicate from outside. Exit the devices. You'll be shocked how you'll be so clear about your future. You'll be shocked how you'll be so happy about your life. He'll tell you, go to Instagram, and you think it's the Holy Ghost. When you open, you see a wedding. One, two, three. And you say, you see. You see. By now, you should have been married. It could have been you. Then you are beginning to feel some way. External voice. Imagine you didn't want the Instagram. Will you ever feel like that? External. That's how he talks. You're a master of the spiritual. You're a master of the spiritual. I'm not a novice at all. You're a master of the spiritual. Somebody will take a herb and put it in his mouth and start making incantations. And you won't take communion and put it in your mouth. Somebody has blown powder on your chair. Madufadi kadaya. Also, one day I went to office, I saw that somebody has put powder on my chair. You know what I did? I sat on the chair and I moved my bum bum. <laughs> I said, today, you will feel the pain. <laughs> you see, because I know the realm of the spirit, that powder, as I moved my bum bum, I did it in faith. You, you will get bum bum. You know, bum. <laughs> I, I massage it into your system. But you have put powder on my chair. <laughs> that you know that, yes, this man, they don't bring poison his way. You come to your house and you see somebody has put a uh, red this thing on your door. Remove it and say, nonsense. Set it on fire. Whoever brought it here, I burn you in the name of Jesus. Like, some things, Satan must know that this guy is too crazy. You come to your house, you see somebody has put a cojine with a, a door. And you are like, Jesus, no, don't do Jesus. Take it. If you are still doubting, go and find the anointing oil. Put it on it and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm coming to burn you. Whoever is responsible, may fire touch it. You see? That's how it is. But do you know the shocking thing? Strangely enough, all of us know this, but it's a silent remote. Let him that is dousing touch the stone. Because of the things you are doing, when you see the Kujan, you say, Jesus. <laughs> you know if you touch it, your leg will become like this. Right? Prophet, there's something in my house. Please, please. We really need you in our house. You don't need me. Don't you have fingers? Is it not the same fingers I come and carry? Will I bring special glove? Because of what you have been doing, you are afraid to touch it. Because you have not been fasting, you are afraid to touch it. Because you have... That's why I'm trying to tell you that when we get through these teachings, you understand where fasting and prayer comes in. 
It is actually devices to embolden you in your journey. It emboldens you. It, it eradicates the toxins. That makes Satan have a, 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 a fun system with your life. The realm of the spirit is open. Ladies and gentlemen, the realm of the spirit is open. It is open. You can stand here today and say, 2024 will not end without my miracle car. And I'm telling you, in, tw in 12 months, that car will be in your garage. You can stand in your room and say, Lego Darianda Sando, Felegido Sanda, Lero Barihastaba. No one in my family, no one in my business, no one, no one, no one. That's how you start speaking. And you are making laws in the spirit. And you are going to get your testimony. Child of God. You are doing business and nobody is doing sales for you. Get into your room, shut the door, and begin to mention names. I open my business to Nestle Ghana. I open my business to Toyota Ghana. Just call them forth. Do you know how God will begin to answer you? He will answer you with agents. One person will come and say, oh, can I buy for this? So, okay, thank you. Now all of a sudden, because you prayed about it, something dawns on you. Where do you work, sir? I work at Toyota Ghana. And you just smile. Because God has just sent you a first fruit. That the whole company didn't come and do business with you. But somebody who works there came. For God to show you that I've been here what you have been saying. Ah. <laughs> the thing when we go to places is, is people like us. No. But when you get there, you, you catch the spirit. You sit in a plane, you go to a country. You know the spirit in charge of this nation. You catch him. So I'm here. And as long as I may have suspended your duties, get out. Get out. How do you dream a dream and you wake up and you tell the devil you'll be shocked down praying? That's a knife. I told you 2010, I went somewhere. I slept in a hotel. A spirit came to press me. I gave him warning. I didn't pray, sir. I said, this is your last time. If you show up again, you will regret it. Can you imagine when I was sleeping? This is how I was sleeping. Be my eyes. I was just waking one spirit to wake up. I was just calling my neck. Aha! Uh -huh. You came back. The spirit to be shocked. That's what you hear. Spirit say you are pressing my neck. I said, <laughs> I will press you. You came back. That means that what am I trying to tell you? Child of God, stop playing with this thing. In tiny, uh, what a uh, uh, throw, whatever something has pressed you. Hey! Give him, give him one. That munun kunu or kunun munu should come. One it. You tell me. You tonight come. You will see who press whose neck. Do you know what will happen? Initially, it might do like they are trying to come. They will scare you a little bit. But when you increase in authority, you realize that it will take you 10 months, one year, 10 years. You've not had that episode again. Because somebody has grown in authority. And when you grow in authority, I will show you in this year, when you grow in authority, you must master responsibility. This generation is a people that want to be authoritative, have authority in the spirit, but they don't want to take any spiritual responsibility. No fasting, no prayers, living anyhow, and expect to be, have authority. It doesn't work like that. Authority, great authority, great power comes great responsibility. You must be responsible. It's not everything you watch. It's not every conversation you have because those things open doors for demons to have legal grounds. I learned that lesson a long time ago. Be casting out devils here, the devil start beginning to display. Hey, leave me. Have you seen some of the ushers? They are not, they are not careful. Some of them, they, they are not fasting. The demons will just start up. You did it. When the demons slap you, go and pray. It means that there is something you have opened. Up. Hey! <laughs> because there are two things. If the demon is slapping you, not because it has power over you, and it's slapping you because you were careless, then you were not sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes the demon is busy, the Holy Ghost says, Open your eyes. The slap is coming. Then you see. <laughs> You have covered your Zandoro Bozo. <laughs> There's a kind of slap when they slap you, 
That's how the devil be whispering. You'll be mad, though. You'll be mad, though. Because the, the slap went. You feel it's affecting your mind. <laughs> the devil will lie to you and say, I'm giving you the spirit of madness. <laughs> we have transferred it. <laughs> Child of God. The realm of the spirit is not a scary place. But it's a, it's a place of men who understand the dealings by right knowledge. And the moment you have that right knowledge, it's very easy. You know how to enter and come out. You know how to trade in that realm. You know how to deal. You know that the real thing that is happening in your office, that everybody is on your case, is a spiritual matter. There is an edict that has been declared. Harass him. So you are like, why is that nobody likes me? Why is everybody fighting me? Something has been declared in the spirit against you and you are not aware. Some of you in the spirit, you are on wanted list and you are not aware. That means anywhere you go, people will harass your life. And you don't even know it. But when you are sent to the Holy Ghost, I didn't say it at the conference, but this is what I wanted to actually say. Stop pressing for me. At the conference, I wanted to say something. Do you know it was intimacy with God that made God come and tell Joseph, the people who are looking for your husband. He was not praying. God came to tell him that people are looking for your son. They are dead. Get up. That means that it is God who will tell you this battle fight. This battle is laziness. This battle you ate too much. This battle you insulted somebody. That's why Satan has got a chance. Go and say sorry. By that, you know what to do. A lot of you talk anyhow. You don't know one of the chiefest ways demons get you is the way you talk. You talk loosely out of emotions. And demons go like, he didn't talk well. So we'll deal with him. Did somebody learn something today? Yes. You learned a lot. Yes. Don't worry. Digest it. When you listen again, realize it's not plenty like that. It's, it can sip into your system. That's all right. And the Holy Ghost go, if you didn't hear anything, is to carry you into the realm of God. It is in the realm of God we operate as God seated in God for God. And now we also make law from that realm. Don't get fascinated in the demonic angelic realm. I saw seven angels and I said, no, go beyond. Go and see God. Let the Holy Ghost carry you. And it requires a lot of focus. It requires a lot of focus. Do you know the demonic realm in the angelic realm, there's a journey to fly and to operate in. And they don't have the assistance of the Holy Ghost. So first of all, what they do is that they fast. Then when they fast, they conjure spirits to assist them to journey into that realm. So you see an old man will enter the forest and he can see all the dwarfs and start communicating with them. But you have the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. When you kneel down, he can show you. This, this, this was done. When you wake up, you say, Mommy, I had a dream. 300 years ago, I heard a name. Who is that? He say, it sounds like my great, my grandmother mentioned a story like that. Then you ask, ask, ask. Ah, this is what they did. Okay. Then Holy Ghost now shows you what to do to undo it. He might tell you that in your day, these are the requirements so that your children can enter freedom. But you must know. Isn't it amazing that the spirit of truth shall guide us into all reality? 
there's a spirit that will guide you into reality. The Holy Ghost. He's beckoning you to pray. He's beckoning you to fast. He's beckoning you to study. He's beckoning you to read a book. Follow. You will enter the spirit. You will enter the spirit, the realms. I didn't talk about pathways today, but there are pathways in the spirit. Different pathways. The devil is using the back door. We have the front door. The right path. We are the owners of that realm. He only comes in creeping, spying out what you are not aware of and still say. But you are the owner. You are the owner. All these juju men, all these shrines, they are using the back door into the spirit. Back doors into the spirit. And there's always a problem with the back door. There's always a cost behind the back door. But we come with the good shepherd. We come with the owner of the realm. We come with the spirit of the realm. If the Holy Ghost is the founder, creator of the realm of the spirit, and that Holy Ghost is in you. Do you said in Ecclesiastes 3? He said he has set eternity. He has set the spirit in your heart. He has set eternity in your heart. He has set eternity in your heart. Speak to the Lord, someone. Speak to the Lord, someone. Yourself on your most holy faith, praying the Holy Ghost. Build, 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 build. Somebody build. All things are mine. I'm no more a victim. I'm a victim. The lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. My heritage is good. commanding heritage and this is the heritage of the sons of God I refuse I refuse I refuse I reverse I repair I know my worth I know who I am the word of God is alive in my spirit. I'm a doer of the word. I cannot fail. I'm an expert in spiritual matters. Yes. I'm known because the Holy Ghost is with me. Principalities and powers, they see the glory of Christ shining through me. Because the spirit of truth carries me through the realms. <laughs> I speak to Lift your voice and pray. You are an expert in the spirit matters. Paul said, I will not have you ignorant. Paul said, I will not have you to be ignorant. You are an expert in the spirit matters. You are an expert in spiritual matters. You are not a novice in the spirit. 
I will not have you ignorant concerning the pneumaticus, concerning spiritual realities. We are not ignorant. We are experts. We know what one hour of prayer can do for us. We know how a seed will open a door for us. We understand. We are experts. Listen, Colossians 1 verse 16. Let's read it quickly and pray. He said, all things, Colossians 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Now listen to this. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones. I told you this, I'll try and teach you on thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. The Bible says in chapter 2, verse 10. See what it says. And ye are complete in him, which is the head. Of all principality and power. That means that any time your intimacy and your bond with the Lord is intact, as soon as you enter the spiritual realm, it's as if Jesus entered there. You get the results Jesus gets. There's no shortcut again. You demand what is yours. <laughs> Ye are complete. You are not incomplete. Oh. You are complete in him. Complete in him. Complete in him. Who is the head over all principality and power. So we are going to lift up our voice. By that power of resurrection he has given us. Forget the mistakes of yesterday. Forget the problems of your father and your mother. We are lifting up our voice right now in the name of Jesus. If we are complete in him. Every principality that holds something. Every power that has hidden something that belongs to us. By reason of this prayer. We are declaring our completeness. We are declaring our authority. All things were created by him and for him. Therefore you stand there and say, Satan, <laughs> I don't care what you stole. I don't care how you stole it. Give it back now. Because I'm not even coming on the basis of the fact that I deserve it. There is somebody I'm complete in. I'm not complete in myself. I'm complete in Jesus. I'm complete in Jesus. I'm complete in Jesus. Somebody begin to open your mouth and pray. You are complete in Jesus. And so your completion in Jesus is the basis for the things you must see in your life. Oh, lift your voice. Lift your voice. It's never too late for redemption. It's never too late for repair. It's never too late for things that are destroyed to come back. Dead things come back to life. Somebody begin to see your completeness in Jesus. Nothing missing, nothing lost. 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 Remember, Jesus is your surety of the covenant. Wherever you fell short in the covenant, it is on the basis of the knowledge of the covenant. Begin to make declarations. Begin to make demand. Lift your voice. I am not my emotions. Ha, 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 ha. I have control over my emotions. The power of God is alive in my spirit. I saw. I saw. I roar. I saw. 
I roar, I saw, Atura Pata, Tiata Palabata. That wizard in your area is your subordinate. That witch doctor in your family is lower rank. Somebody lift up your voice. You are complete in him. You are complete in him. You are complete in him. of God. You are the captain of the host of the armies of God. You are not a victim. You are a declarer. You are a legislator. You are a determining factor in the life you live. You determine the events of your life. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. You determine the events of your life. You determine the functioning of your life. You determine the happenings of your life. You determine it. You determine it. You determine it. You determine it, you determine it, you determine it, you must condemn, you must shut down, 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 Ayatata Telele, Arata, 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 Lebelebetora Pata Prata Labe. evil covenant that has risen against you. Send the fire of God there now. I just saw it in the spirit. Anybody mentioning your name? Anybody making a declaration against your life? Anybody calling you for death? Anyone calling sickness upon you? Send the fire of God. Lift your voice. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Whoever has sent confusion into your family, into your ministry, into your life, into your business, into your body, into your health, into your children. Send the fire of God, the justice of God, the judgment of God. Father, whoever has mentioned my name, whoever is willing be evil, Lord, may they eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. Every interruption, every interference, every interruption, every interference to the assignment of God in my life. Father, we declare, let your hand be lifted. In Lift your voice. 
voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice again and pray and say that anything that has delayed your advancement, anything that has denied your celebration, any person, any event, every lack of knowledge that has destroyed your celebration by the revelation of the word, we make advancement. Seize back your property. Seize back your health. Seize back your ministry. Seize back your anointing. Collect your marriage. Collect your ministry. Collect your children. Whatever the enemy came to steal. Today, we reverse. Today, we arrest. Today, we seize back power in the Katala. The devil comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But the Lord has come that you will have life. Lady, pray and restore the marriage. Pray and declare any marital destiny that has been truncated by the authority in Christ. I deal properly. Therefore, I restore. I restore. I restore. I restore. I restore. Declare right now. Declare right now. In 12 months. 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 The Egyptians I see, I will see them no more. The Egyptians I see in my marital life, in my business, in my family, I will see them no more. Lift your voice and pray. The Egyptians we see, we shall see them no more. Lift your right hand to heaven. I see about 10 people this weekend you are about to enter it's like I saw you are entering a realm you have never been in before I don't know I just saw about 10 of you you are getting a testimony you, you know this one you have never got such a testimony on life. I saw 10 brand new testimonies 10 and the Lord said that what you he, he is come to show your hand how to war. Let God de man a man son. Sure kia faranda. Yes. To war. You are about to enter. You have actually entered. Unprecedented. <laughs> Unprecedented. Lift your right hand to heaven. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. Father, thank you. Thank you. I see some people it's like because of ignorance you submitted your destiny into some wrong hands and I just saw the angel of the Lord snatching it from those hands and putting it back in your hand <laughs> so God I should declare your destiny is back on course with full force your financial destiny is back on course with full force your marital destiny is back on course with full force. Your medical destiny is back on course with full force. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I literally saw it. 
I saw the angel of the Lord seizing. It looked like gold. And inside the gold was a green emerald that was shining like a light. And he said, collect it. Collect it. Wherever they subjected their destiny to. Wrong friends. Wrong family members. Wizards. Witches. <laughs> Bosses that were envious of you. Friends that were envious of you. He said, collect it. Ushers, help me. <laughs> I see the angel of the Lord. Collecting it. And I don't just see him. He is standing by your side. They say, hold it and be bold. Magadaboshia. Something is about to shift. I know what I'm seeing. That, that promise and veil. Something is about to shift over your head. They will stop promising you and changing their mind. That threshold concerning your finances is breaking off your head. I know what I'm talking about. Ah, you know you should be handling thousands of dollars. But something is blocking it. Something is blocking it. There's somebody here. You should be working in a multinational company. You dream about it. People suggest you, but they never call you. The angel of the Lord said, hold it. Hold it. Hold your destiny. There is a sea that is breaking. I said this weekend, 10 of you will come and testify a type of miracle that has never never happened. Financial miracle, medical miracle, family miracle, miracles of all sorts that has never happened. Like, a new type of experience that has never happened. You are 10. You are 10. You are 10. Angels of the Lord. Ah, I see the angels in UK right now. I see the angel, two people in United Kingdom watching live. The hand of the Lord is coming upon you. Ah, I see the angels entering Nigeria. I see them going to Australia. I see them in Portugal. I see them in Italy. I see them in France. I see them in America. I see them in Canada. He said this week, your belongings are being restored. Your belongings are being restored. He's the head of all principality. We have boldness to reclaim what is ours because we are in him. And we are not just in him, we are complete. We are perfect. We are whole in him. Nothing broken, nothing spoiled. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah. Me. Why do I see spear, 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 spear? I see the Lord giving five people spears. <laughs> and written on the spear is the justice in your family. That's what I heard. Some of you are dealing with issues in your family. I just saw five spears. The angels just threw it into the service. And I saw written on it justice, justice. Justice will prevail in their family justice lands that must come back houses that must come back properties that have been sold documents i hear god say justice people that have been put on the altar one of the persons in that family is the name is justice i just saw the name justice the name written on the sphere is justice justice it's a name justice it's a family member. The name is Justice. He said, Justice is coming to justice. 
Ele cabara machanda. Elohim Maduna. Elohim Maduna. The Lord has opened my eyes. I'm standing by the sea. I'm standing by the sea. And all of a sudden, I saw a whale. And the whale's mouth was open. Yet the whale said, I will not vomit their inheritance. Hmm. And I said, why will you not vomit their inheritance? He said, their grandfather was a fetish. And he told us that. We should give him long life. And he will give us the family riches. I'm standing at a coastal line. Hmm. And the whale is talking to me. But all of a sudden I saw the Lord descend with a golden sword. Hmm. 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 To dia satan. Do remandiro sida. Shubakuba Kabasan. <laughs> Listen, whoever traded your family's glory and said you will be physical beggars, you will work but you will still beg, you will go to the office but you will still beg, nothing you get will be enough. We cut that well into two. That well, we pierce it with the piercing of God. Now let that be a distribution. Right now and tonight, may the Lord visit everybody with their due portion. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Madarada Sanda. I'm seeing a name and I'm seeing a name like Ank, Ank, I don't know if it's Ankobia or Akonobia something. I'm seeing something like that. A-K-O something. Akono A-N-A-K-O something. Anko Ankono or Ankonobi Ankone something. I'm seeing that name. I'm seeing that name. Father Kodera Sivalumi Ruba Busiaban. Ah. Hey. Everybody quiet. You be quiet. I saw the Lord just opened my eyes and said, Look to your left again. When I look at this whale, this whale was lying around the Vota region, Adam Vota region to Togo. That's what I saw, the, the, the whale. And I saw on that whale, un, uh, something, unco something, I don't know, but I'm seeing that word. Then I looked to the left and I saw a whale that was Cote d'Ivoire, Elubo, Western region. I saw another whale over there. But this whale was black. And what was in the whale's belly was like a chest. And I saw heart, human heart that was bo boiling in a courtroom. And I asked the Lord, what is this about? He said, pray. There are people here, their mothers, their fathers are struggling with heart disease. And it is as if it's being transferred to them. And I said, Lord, what is it? He said, these people, anytime they're about to enter their blessing of enjoying their labor, Satan will cut their life short. Oshas, please help me on this thing. It's a wheel. It's a wheel. It's a wheel. Ah, that's the that's the wheel. Ankobra, Ankobra, Anko, Anko Bia, Ankobra. That is the Western wheel that has the name Anko something. I'm seeing it well. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
What, in fact, let me just pray for every person connected to the coastal line that has their destiny swallowed by the marine because of grandfathers and great grandfathers. I stand as a prophet of God. I exhume from the belly of the fish. Katos kapana. Izenze sotani yatas. Falakupranda sute. Wherever they are, Father, begin to distribute their portion. Husbands appear. Wives appear. Children appear. Money appear. Houses appear. Visas appear. Businesses appear. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands. Just lift your hands to Jesus and thank the Lord. we give you glory give you praise in Jesus name Amen God will you know on Wednesday we have girls girls sister sister please don't miss that meeting for anything come okay come and ask questions come let's pray for you so you get a boy so you get a girl just come just make sure you are here excited come amen special all girls meeting invite your friends come if your friends female friends no male will be. The male will just set up for us and go and stand outside. We'll sack them. Hey, they're not part of Yeah, so. Amen. And God willing, on Saturday, we have boys to men. Yeah, so that. And that's at 4 p.m. The girls' one is at 6. Is it 6 or 5.30? Okay, 5.30. So 5.30, once you close work, please head towards here. Yeah. And then... Uh, we know the Lord Jesus is going to do something mighty in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you, are you excited? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. God willing, on 29th, we have a special prayer meeting. So 29th, that's the last day of the month. We are meeting here. It's a leap year prayer. Intense. Come, come for some prayers. You need to pray. Uh, this year, we'll pray certain prayers more, because some things must shift in your life. Some of you have prayed, you have fasted, you have given, but there are entities standing in your way. So we have to push, push them out of the way. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, oh, I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh, in the morning, in the evening. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And so, Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. We declare your peace, your glory, your power is made available. We lack nothing. 
all things are perfected all things are completed we walk in the reality that the realm of God is the realm we are seated in therefore by that Lord we transact according to the authority of God we are complete in him therefore no principality can bring retaliation we declare today we banish ignorance we destroy weakness in spirit we declare Lord we are strong in you we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and we deal with every entity that tries to encroach on our liberty in Christ Jesus thank you Lord that we are blessed in everything we do in Jesus mighty name I bless you the blessings of him that died arose and is alive today I bless you the blessings of the Lord himself go prosper nothing defeating you prospering on all sides in Jesus precious mighty name Amen Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I've realized the mystery of iniquity that is at work in the earth. I realize not submitting to you is allowing iniquity to work in me. Therefore, tonight I repent. I yield my member even as your instrument. I accept you, Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Today, I enter the family of God because of your sacrifice. Thank you for accepting me and cleansing all my sins and my unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen.